It is the biggest race of the year. It is the Daytona 500. Triumph and defeat have happened in this race. And for years, drivers have fought for 500 miles to claim one of the best trophies in all of racing. The 1994 chapter of this the history of, of the event will be written today at Daytona International Speedway like it is every year since 1959 in its first running. Lee Petty won that race by less, by, by less than three feet in a photo finish that wasn't decided that he had won it until three days after the race had finished. And how technology has come. We have some of the greatest pieces of machinery from this country that these great engineers have built and put on this racetrack to race today. And we're going to see who built the best. Hello everybody and welcome to the Daytona 500 here from Daytona Beach, Florida. It is the 36th running this year of it. And last year we had a great race between Dale Jarrett, Dale Earnhardt. It was the Dale and Dale show off turn four. And this year looking to have another great chapter written as we have the top four who have never won this 500 starting today top five actually top six they've never won the 500 and back in seventh place you can include Dale Earnhardt into that Been fighting to win this 500 now for almost 15 years can this year be his year Davey Allison your 92 500 winner back there as well if we're going to go through the field today for the first race of the 1994 season the Daytona 500 on pole today is Ernie Irvin in that Morgan McClure number four Kodak film Chevy Lumina? He starts alongside another Chevy Lumina of Jeff Gordon in his DuPont Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. Rick Wilson driving the legendary 43 car for Richard Petty for Penny Enterprises. He starts alongside the Stavola Brothers 8 of Sterling Marlin. The old man Morgan Shepard starts for one of the oldest and grandest teams in NASCAR who's appreciated much success in this race. Wood Brothers starts alongside another Hendrick Chevrolet driven by Ken Schrader. Dale Earnhardt in his Richard Childress Goodwrench three-car Chevy Lumina starts alongside Davey Allison as Robert Yates 28 Haviland Ford. Steve Grissom. Kind of a underdog team starting in the front today next to an extreme underdog in Bob Brevik and his number 34 Ford. The rookie Todd Bodine, who had to take who took over this car late in, in the season last year. He starts alongside another rookie in Joe Nemechek. The underdog from his dual race he ran, Rodney Orr starts alongside the last person to win at a plate race in NASCAR, Mark Martin. Ward Burton, another rookie, starts alongside Harry Gant, who's very very well maybe making his last ever start in this race. His last ever 500 start. Jim Sauter starts alongside the 1990 winner of this race, Derek Cope. Rick Mast starts alongside Dave Marcus. Jimmy Spencer starts for the Bobby Allison team, Bobby Allison War Sports team. Bobby Allison won this race three times in his career. He starts on the line that Billy Hagan, number 14, piloted by Bobby Hamilton. Kyle Petty, the son of the, of the person who's won this race the most times, starts alongside Jeremy Mayfield, another rookie in this race today. Loy Allen Jr., another rookie in this race today, starts alongside... Buddy Baker, the winner of the fastest 500 ever in 1980. Kenny Wallace, the sophomore driver, starts alongside Wally Dahlbeck Jr. 
Jeffrey Bodine driving for his own team starts alongside the car that his brother used to drive, who was sadly killed in a crash at Watkins Glen last year. Dick Trickle now drives his car. Short tracks. Expert. Lake Speed, Dale Jarrett starting alongside of each other. Jarrett won this race last year. Can he go back to back? He's going to have to come from the back. Rusty Wallace looking for his first 500. Next to the man who got his first 500 all but five years ago this year. Darrell Waltrip starts on the outside of him. Bobby Hillen Jr. starts alongside Brad Teague in that Jimmy Means 52 car. Bill Elliott, winner of this race, starts alongside sophomore driver Bobby Labonte. Ted Musgrave starts alongside Jimmy Hensley. Terry Labonte rounds out the back of the field next to Michael Waltrip. That is your starting lineup for this year's Daytona 500. 42 cars look to triumph this track today, but only one can walk away with the trophy. Drivers to your car. Jarrett's been called to their cars. The pace car sitting, waiting anxiously. I think, well, there, there, there you go. I gotta wait a minute. The pace car drivers getting in right now. We're getting ready to go green flag racing for five hundred miles today. Who can survive it? Who can win it? It's the Daytona 500. The engines are being fired. Ernie Urban. Won his dual race. Jeff Gordon won his dual race. They were the two fastest cars all week. They were fast in the clash. They were fast in the duels. They were fast in qualifying. And I bet you they'll be fast today. The pace car. Paces them around through three and four. Before he opens the cage. And lets these 42 hungry drivers. Go at it for 500 miles. Rick Wilson, Sterling Marlin back there as well. I just think they're not going to try and go for it. As the pace car takes him off a of four. He's got him down the front stretch now. Elmo Langley, the driver of that Pontiac pace car. He's going to take a hard left-hand corner off into the pit lane. He's going to let these boys loose. 500 miles. It's the Daytona 500. And we're green. Ernie Irvin pulls out to a strong lead over Gordon down the back stretch. Rick Wilson slots in the third, but don't you think Jeff Gordon's not going to wait long, wait around long? To the inside for the lead down in the three. Gordon wants to lead the first lap in 94, and Sterling Marlin's going to give him a push. Sterling Marlin, the clash winner, is going to go under Gordon as Ernie Irvin chops it down to the bottom. The first time we've had 42 cars on the racetrack this weekend, and it's already looking to be intense. Irvin leads the first lap from the pole. Gordon slots in second. He hits where he started. Marlon in third, battling with Ken Schrader for fourth, and Morgan Shepard drafting with him for fifth. Dale Earnhardt right behind him as well. Nose to tail right now is in off of two down the backstretch. Morgan Shepard pulls to the inside of Sterling Marlon. Dale Earnhardt three wide down the backstretch with no help. Shepard slots in the line. Schrader in behind him. Earnhardt gets filed into the middle. Oh! Davy Allison throws it there through the middle three wide. Davy Allison three abreast off a of four down the front stretch. We're completing lap two of the Daytona 500. Only five miles completed, and we already are side by side for the lead. Sterling Marlin to the front. Ernie Irvin trying to hold his ground on the outside as you see the field fighting back and forth with each other side by side, and they're two by two by two, three cars deep. Here, as, Ern as Sterling Marlin passes Ernie Irvin with help from Morgan Shepard. Sterling Marlin looking to go up high to block Ernie Irvin, but he 
pushes him against the wall, and Ernie keeps his nose out there. Ernie pulls the advantage down in the three. Help from Gordon, those Hendrick drivers. It's three Chevrolets lined up against two forwards and a, and a uh, Pontiac. Here comes a Ford on the outside now and a Chevrolet of Dale Earnhardt. We have an eight-car battle now for the lead. Side-by-side -side for two for a lap now. And it looks like Ernie Irvin keeps it there. Gordon whips it outside. Three wide down into the, the turn one entrance. Three abreast here. They've been racing very aggressively through these laps. Three wide behind the leaders. Two wide now behind Ernie Irvin as he pulls back out to a lead. Ernie Irvin looking to be the favorite in the early goings of this race as we have three completed of 200. Gordon shoots high. He can't seem to find the gap there. Here comes Sterling Mullen to the inside of Jeff Gordon. Sterling Mullen looking. Looking. Gordon's going to like chop down in front of him. They cut off that run. Gordon and Irvin. It's going to be a duel between these two today if they can make it to the finish. De you see car slotting around the back there. Derek Cope into the back of this front pack now as we kind of separate into a two-car field, two packs right now. The pack in the front's very, very racy, but the back part of this field is single file for the most part. The two leaders are working away from the field now. Three wide behind Todd Bodine. Kenny Wallace to the inside of Todd Bodine. Look at Davey Allison chopping lanes, and Gordon pulls out down in the three for the lead. Does he, does he have a run under Ernie Irvin? He does. Jeff Gordon trying to get to the front here. Ernie Irvin's led every lap so far today, but Gordon wants to lead the first one for him this year. Can he get him off a of four? They're even still. The pack draws right up to their back bumpers. Who's going to lead lap number five? It's Irvin Still. Irvin Still leads through five. Gordon can't seem to get him. But we come down in the one now. He's got drafting help, but they're three wide behind him as Jeff Gordon tries to get a run here. But look at Rick Wilson trying to get his nose under Gordon. Side by side. Down the back stretch. Sterling Mullen giving. Irvin a huge push down that back stretch and back in the three, and that's going to let Irvin clear and hold them off still. Irvin having a very dominant car here right now. But Gordon gets back to the inside, and Irvin couldn't clear him. Gordon back side by side with him now. Down off a of four, coming through the triangle to complete lap six. This time it looks to be Jeff Gordon. Gordon breaks the stronghold Ernie Irvin had on the lead for the beginning parts of this race, and Gordon finally leads a lap. Kenny Walsh pulls the inside, three wide under Dale Earnhardt in that third lane of traffic. Three abreast behind the first four cars as Gordon tries to clear Ernie Irvin, still no, to no avail. Side by side still, down the back stretch. Sterling Mullen giving a huge push to that four car down the back stretch again. Ken Schrader right there on the outside as well, side by side with his teammate Jeff Gordon. Ernie Irvin to the front of the field. He's going to have to block lanes again. He holds them off strong here as we complete 7 of 200. Ernie Irvin, your leader. Gordon to the inside of Irvin. Once again, these guys cannot seem to get away from each other. And Rick Wilson, three wide for the lead in the middle of two. They are three by three for the lead off of two. They are three wide still for the lead. Still three wide. Incredible racing here. Irvin trying to pull out, but he has no drafting up from behind as Gordon and Wilson keep it there. Still three wide for the lead. Still three wide. Still three wide. They are still three wide for the lead. Kenny Walsh looking to make it four wide. Rick Wilson's going to lead this lap. Yes, he will lead the lap. Rick Wilson... Led that lap by one one hundredth of a second as they get it back to two wide racing. They are four wide in two. They make it back to three wide. Two wide for the lead still. It's Rick Wilson and Ernie Irvin. Jimmy Spencer coming up to the front now. As Ernie Irvin clears the frenzy behind him with help from Jeff Gordon. Gordon clears as well now. It's a three-car single-file battle behind them now as they are racing their Derek Culp trying to make it four wide under Davey Allison. He can't seem to do anything there. Jeff Gordon, Ernie Irvin. 
Single filing themselves out and getting away from the pack behind them now. Ty Terry Labonte already going to be a lap down almost. He is having a very slow car. We're getting word that he has lost a cylinder, they're saying. And he is 30 miles off the pace. And look at the leaders try and split him. Gordon gets a huge advantage from it. Irvin picks the wrong lane. Terry Labonte is going to hold up these drivers a lot down the straightaway. This is going to cause a huge frenzy of cars here. As we complete 9 of 200 coming through 3 now. They're trying to get around Terry Labonte. A lot of the pack has now. As Gordon leads them, but Kenny Wallace has a huge run. Gordon can't seem to hold off the run on the outside from Irvin and the run on the inside from Kenny Wallace. Kenny Wallace is the new leader of the, of the Daytona 500 with help from Ken Schrader from behind. GM dominating the top five right now, but that hasn't been consistent throughout the first ten laps as we've had a frenzy of ma manufacturers and drivers be in the top five. Derek Cope is in seventh. Morgan Shepard side-drafting Ernie Irvin trying to get back in the fifth. Kenny Wallace working lanes in, in the lead, trying to hold off the drivers behind him. Side-by-side, side, Hendrick drivers are back down in the three. Schrader and Gordon side-by-side. Side. And look at the four car trying to go into the middle between Gordon and... And Schrader, watch out, Irvin. Irvin made some wild moves in this dual race. He's making a lot of wild ones today. Ken Schrader to the point there. Back to three wide behind him. It has been a frenzy of a race so far. They guys have not stayed calm. We're only 11 laps through. We have multiple pit stops, 189 laps to go, and over 450 miles left in this race. The frenzy of the pack down the back stretch here. In the three. Gordon slots back down. You see in that middle line. Shh, and look at this. Morgan Shepard with help from Derek Culp. To the point goes Morgan Shepard over Rick Wilson. And Ernie Irvin's trying to work in that third groove in the middle. He's getting condensed. Wow. Hold on to your hats, folks. This is getting intense. They are th going to be three by three by three for the lead, I think. And Derek Cope is going for it. The 1990 winner is going for it. But Davey Allison, who's behind him, doesn't really want wait to wait for, for him to make the move. He wants to get under him. Three by three, three wide for the lead. This is incredible racing. They're still three wide for the lead. And it looks to be that Derek Cope is going to get the advantage off of four. Derek Cope is your leader of the race. And wow, they're going to be almost four wide off that corner as Allison slots up to the middle lane. Cope leads. Cope leads the race. Three wide behind Cope as Morgan Shepard pulls to the outside. Sterling on the inside. Three wide again for the lead. The front pack has been going at it. They have been racing their... Their hearts out for the opening parts of this race. And Stone Mountain takes a strong advantage off of four. As he goes to block three lanes of traffic. Now, oh no. Four wide in the back. Between Earnhardt, Irvin, Schrader, and Wallace. Now they're four wide still. Irvin doesn't care. He wants to file up through the middle there. Wow, they work it four wide. Fine, they door each other just a little bit. They nick each other. Close call there in the opening laps of this race still. As Marlin leads. Cope in second. Calming down a little bit. Only two wide and three wide in one part now. Allison gets to gets the third now. Single file. He's, by, he's in front of the three wide pack behind him. These guys, the, the top... Um, 13 has spaced themselves out from the from the pack behind them. It's spaced out basically in front of it, the field is spaced out and the top 14 or 13 here are going at it. And here comes Ken Schrader to the inside of Davy Allison for third. We have lap traffic coming up here. Bobby Labonte, Michael Waltrip, Ted Musgrave, and Daryl Waltrip are lap traffic and they're going to be in the way here. Wow. This this front pack is fast, and these guys are and these guys are slow. And watch, let's watch what happens here. This is gonna be big. Can't, d oh my gosh, Sterling Mullen tries to go up against the wall here, and this is where the field is gonna get condensed. 
three and four wide. They are four wide for the lead. Derek Culp charging to the inside. Three and four wide still. Three by three still. They're stuck behind these guys. Ken Schrader tries to do it. Ernie Irvin with a crazy move. Trying to get around Derek Culp for the lead here. Three wide. We're watching this pack here. Ernie Irvin looking him in the front there. Just by himself, he's blown by Derek Culp. He has a lot of speed in that car. And these guys are condensed back here. They are stuck behind this lap traffic. And that's going to break up the field. Just that is insane. They're four wide. Watch out here. Morgan Shepard, Jeff Gordon, Sterling Marlin, four wide. It's not going to work. Maybe it will. It's working as of the moment. Still working. Still working. These guys really need to calm down right now. They're four wide still. Oh, they're back to three wide now. They're back to three wide racing, but they are stuck behind some lap traffic. Oh, well, maybe hold on one second. They might not be stuck so much. As they've gotten, if they speeded up that lap traffic, actually, as Ernie Irvin pulls back to the lead here. And this pack is roaring. Through the corners. There, Waltrip drops back from the outside. Having a slow car into 500. Lap 18 now. We're about halfway through a fuel run. As Ernie Irvin and Rick Wilson lead the field here. Pack, next pack of cars. See only at the trial. They got they got a little ways before they catch that next next pack of lap cars. That puts down everyone it puts down a lap down cars all the way to 37th place. Jimmy Spencer, Derek Cope, and now Ken Schrader are your top five. All behind Ernie Irvin, who leads the race through 18. Ernie Irvin leads. Rick Wilson in second. Side by side for third. Ken Schrader and Jimmy Spencer. Schrader cuts right up in front of Spencer. Dale Earnhardt now moving up to four. Three wide behind Earnhardt. As you see, Gordon now slots the inside of both of them. Three by three for position behind the top four. Top three, actually. They're catching the leaders, though, because they're, you know... Eight cars do better than three. And Ken Schrader is going to go to the inside of Rick Wilson. Jeff Gordon, huge run here. He's got a huge run down in the one here on, on his teammate. With Sterling on from behind. And now Sterling goes to the inside of Gordon. As Irvin still leads, there's a lap trap pack of lap traffic. They've, they're catching up to him pretty quickly. These guys are flying around here today. This front pack is very, very fast. And Ernie Irvin is leading them all. That car is blazing fast. Definitely, like I said, a favorite that could win this race. And as we come through by lap 20, they're three wide behind them. But this pack, you know, even if you have a fast car, you need to make the right moves to stay in front of it. And right now, Ernie Irvin's done that so far. But he has to execute it now as we're through the first 50 miles of this race now. He's going to have to execute it now for another 450 miles of this race today. Ernie Irvin getting a, having to block a huge run from Sterling Marlin now. They see the lap traffic there. Ernie Irvin trying to block this huge run from Sterling Marlin. But here comes Jeff Gordon the inside of Sterling Marlin. He's going to have a huge run. I don't know if Ernie's going to be able to block it. He tries to throw a block on it. But Gordon's too much to handle. Gordon to the inside of Irvin. Two younger drivers of the sport. Irvin leads that lap, but Gordon's going to lead it down to the one. Or maybe he won't now. Irvin pulls back even with him. But Gordon's going to have the advantage now down in the corner here. As you see, oh man, Rick Wilson pulls the inside. Makes a three wide per second as Gordon clears. Off of two now, three abreast. Three abreast, off of two now. And look at Kenny Walls trying to make it four wide. These guys, I guess, are starting to get comfortable trying to make it four wide. You see, as we've gone on, these guys have gotten more comfortable with three wide racing. Now they're trying to, they're tempting fate with four wide racing. As Ernie Irvin goes back by Jeff Gordon like nothing. Wow, that car is blazing fast. 
Oh, you can just how when how when there's two cars by themselves, how you can just pull to the, pull out and just pass them with ease. That that says a lot about that car today. Gordon to the inside of Irvin, side by side for the lead once again. I would say uh, these two cars. I say Gordon and Irvin's cars are the fastest. And Irvin's has a slight edge. Rick Wilson right there. Very impressive run for Rick Wilson, by the way. That 43 car is here. we go again. Terry Labonte slowing the field down. It's almost like deja vu right there. What happened with Irvin. And um, Terry Labonte there. Jeff Gordon, though, he gets a huge run away. Too bad he runs into a wall of lap cars. And here we go. How are these guys going to get through this one? In this pack of lap cars is blocking them up. You see last year's 500 winner in it as Earnhardt's trying to lead a bunch of lead lap cars around on the outside past these guys. Oh, that's something you don't want to do. I wouldn't, I, oh, they're four wide. Hold your breath, folks. They are four wide. Oh, man. Four wide in the lap traffic. Hold on. Sterling Marlin, well, Morgan Shepard to the inside. Dale Earnhardt to the inside now. Oh, man. Hold on here. Hold on. I don't think Dave... They're hooked! They're wrecking! Jeff Gordon involved! They're wrecked! Kenny Wallace involved too! Oh, Jimmy, uh, Brad Teagues! Oh, uh, here comes another little pack of cars. Will they get involved? Let's make sure. Let's see no one gets involved here. No, we're good. The wrecks clean themselves up. We have a caution. A lot of cars look to be damaged. Ernie Irvin's car is damaged. Rick Wilson's car is damaged. Jeff Gordon, two of the fastest cars today, damaged and out. Who's the leader of this race now? Morgan Shepard. And just like that, your 500 dreams are slashed. Happens just like that. Gordon's car looks like it can continue on, but... Going to be definitely down on speed. Rick Wilson's car has heavy damage. Ernie Irvin, pretty bad damage as well. Rick Wilson, damage. Terry Labonte, minor damage. Kenny Wallace, pretty heavy damage. Brad Teague's pretty heavy damage. Mark Martin, clean. I think that's pretty much it. About a six or seven car wreck here. They tried four wide and three and just didn't work. Ooh, let's see who's going to pit here. Morgan, it looks like everyone's coming down the pit lane this time by. No one's retired out of this race yet, but there might be some retirees after this wreck. Take a look here. So they come down the pit lane. Comes that 55 car. He's a uh, lap down car, but I guess he's going to pit with the leaders. We'll watch the race off pit road, see who wins the race off. See all these guys pulling in here. Look at Ernie Irvin here. What will he do? Rick Wilson, will he be fine? Rick Wilson DNFs out. Wow. Rick Wilson's day is done. Morgan Shepard's going to win the race off. Ernie, um, Dale Earnhardt's second. All these guys coming off now, too. Here you go. All the drivers coming off the race. Coming off. Oh! Oh, no! I think Sterling Marlin just got some pretty heavy, heavy damage from... Oh, no. What happened to Sterling Marlin? Oh, I think Sterling Marlin's got some heavy back-end damage from what just happened on the pit lane here. Take a look back here. Let's see what happened. This is a really good angle we can get here. Oh, he pulls out. 20 of Bre uh, Buddy Baker's pulling in and slam. Oh. That's that's the that that pretty much ends the day for Sterling Marlin and Buddy Baker. Oh, so many cars on pit lane, just congestion. Now let's go take a look at the replay back and see what happened there with this wreck here. It was with Jeff Gordon. Let's take a look back here. I'll show you. I'll show you what happened. Yes, they're three abreast through this corner, and right here, 
You see that 52 car get loose a little bit, slide up, and Gordon has his fender right in the door, slams right up in the Rick Mast. Rick Wilson gets involved. Brad Teague's involved. Bill Elliott gets doored right there. Not heavy damage, but still. Ooh, what? Does he hit Ken Schrader? He touches Schrader, but nothing hard. But you see right there, Rick Wilson got in it. I mean, just look here. We're right on board with um with the four car. Because he was pretty much out of this. Out of the uh, pack for the most part near the end here. But they just congested up on the outside and he had nowhere to go. Couldn't stop in time and just gets wrecked. Oh, and he drove into Kenny Wallace there. Finish him off even more. Terrible luck for that, for that man. Terrible, terrible luck here. What else do we got here? We got a um, we got we got a TV two camera. What happened here? Show you. Just Teagues comes up, gets gets loose, comes up, slides up, and involves the one, the fifty two, forty three, the forty. Bam. 24 gets by, the 8 squeaks by, the 12 squeaks by, the 5 gets involved, some minor damage for him, still nonetheless, 4. We're lucky these guys didn't have anyone stalled in the middle of the track or anything bad happen because that other pack would have probably piled right into it. Just big, big wreck there. Shame. So many good cars. Out. Getting ready to go back green flag racing here with... 28 laps complete of 200 we'll have when we go back green flag racing Morgan Shepard leading this race with Dale Earnhardt behind him Davey Allison in third Jeffrey Bodines runs up in fourth Derek Cope in fifth sixth place is Ken Schrader seventh place is Jimmy Spencer eighth place is Todd Bodine great run for Todd Bodine Bob Hill Jr. rounds out in ninth top nine and Mark Martin is in tenth um still on my own after being involved in that wreck you saw it in the track in 11th place that car is still semi-fast. But we're going to get ready to go back green flag racing. Here. This time by. And early in the race we already have we already have the fastest two cars taken out. Ernie Irvin and Jeff Gordon. That little wreck on the pit lane. And it's just, it's going to be interesting now. Because we have our fastest two cars out. And we're going to see how the rest of these cars handle. For the following 172 more laps. It's a very long race here. 500 miles. And we're going to see who can outlast everyone. Morgan Shepard, the old man at 52 years old in this 500. He has been running competitive all weekend, all speed weeks. And he's looking to see if he can capitalize off and become the oldest winner of the Daytona 500. Dale Earnhardt, never won a 500 in his illustrious six-time champion career. Searching for seven this year. He's going to try and start it off right. By getting a win here at Daytona, well, to find out. Pace car ready, is ready to take that hard left-hand corner off the pit lane. We're going to go back green flag racing with 172 to go. Shepard out to an early lead here. Keeping his ground. Dale Earnhardt looks to the outside. But it's files in behind him as they go in the one. Davy Ellis in the first car side by side with that lap traffic on the inside of Jimmy Hensley. Off of two down the back stretch now. They go. Looks like Allison now clears. And looks like all the top five clear. Derek Cope clears. Davy Allison going under Dale Earnhardt for second. Derek Cope falling behind. The 1990 champion of this race. Coming in behind him. And, De and Jeffrey Bodine. The winner of the 1986 running of this race is on the outside line. So we come down the back stretch here. Look at Derek Cope slide here. Look at Ken Schrader go in the middle three wide. Got another caution. Wow. We're already back right under caution. Wow. Something must have happened. Oh, oh, oh. Ernie Irvin, who was not out yet, looks like he just finished his car off in another wreck here. This might have been due to some cars having issues getting the cars fixed up. Really quickly and getting the damage. Joe Nemechek involved, the rookie. Jeff Gordon 
Heavy damage on that car still. He's probably done here. I'll take a look here if he is done or not. Is the pole sitter done? Another pole sitter. Yep, he is done. The front row, done. We got to take a look here and see what happened. Joe Nemechek is exploding on the apron here. Let's, uh, let's rewind here. Let's see what happened. Let's see. On fire is Joe Nemechek. Oh, oh, no. Oh, something happened up here on the opening lap of this. I think something happened with... Oh, the five car is backing up the field here. Oh, the 29 just pulls down and causes a huge wreck. Oh, that's a hard impact. Oh, that's a really... Oh! Man, that's a hard impact. I don't... 29 just didn't estimate such a big run the 14 had of Bobby Hamilton here. Underfunded team here. Pulls down. He had such a huge run. The 29 did not estimate for it. Comes right down into him. Kenny Wallace... Our sophomore, sophomore driver, nowhere to go, gets doored. The 29 starts spinning, and he's going to spin right up the track. Gets cl clips to 41, gets him sideways, 14, doors him. Wow. Hits hard. And now it's on from there. Harry Gant in his last 500 piles in. Jeff Gordon, can he avoid this wreck? Well, Ernie Irvin's not going to care. And piles right into him, and that finishes off Gordon and himself. Ernie Irvin, I think, oh, man, that's just, that's a shame. That takes out more cars. And we're back under caution. Let's fast forward here and see if we have anyone, any takers. Yes, we do have takers. Who's going to win the race off pit lane? Oh, they just took... Okay, no one changed position on the pit lane. No, we're not trying to pass them. Did people stay out? Anyone stay out? No, nope, nobody stayed out. I don't know why nobody decided to not pit. Here we go. Let's get this thing sped up here a little bit. Go in here. We're just going to kind of fast forward around here a little bit more. Get them back to turn three here. All right. We're getting ready to go back green flag racing again. We'll have 167 to go this time by. Dick Trickles on the inside this time. Dale Earnhardt, Davey Allison, Jeff Bodine, Bobby Allen Jr., Sterling Marlin, Ken Schrader, Rusty Wallace, who hasn't won a 500 yet, Jimmy Spencer, and Todd Bodine are the top ten. And look at Wally Dolan back in 11th in that. Junior Johnson, 27 car. We're going to go back green flag. After our, I think this was our second caution. Here we go. See the field already spreading back out again. Look at Davey Ellis and Dale Earnhardt drafting in a Congo together. So they separate themselves from the vicious pack behind them. Davey Ellis now pulling the in, in, inside of them. Looking to be four wide down the back stretch. Why are these guys? They were fine the opening laps and now they're going at it. Three wide down in the turn three. Michael Waltrip on the inside of these drivers here. Brother of the 1989 winner, Daryl Waltrip. And here comes this pack roaring back to the to the leaders here. Davey Allison looking high. He's trying to get around Earnhardt any way he can. He wants to be leading this race. Gets pushed high here as we continue through lap 35. Pack still hard and strong as we come back down the one here. Dale Earnhardt pacing himself by Morgan Shepard. Shepard pacing the field right now. And Sterling Marlin with damage is still fast. Top five, Davey Allison pulls out again on Dale Earnhardt. Will he get help from anybody? No. Matter of fact, Bobby Hillen Jr. looks like he'll go to the outside of him, and Allison's going to fall back. Here comes Ken Schrader, though, with drafting help. They're going to pull even with the two cars on the outside. Never mind. He's going he's to leave him out to hang. That's going to move Bobby Hillen Jr. up to third place, and now look at this three wide for fourth. Well, never mind. Two wide for fourth. Here, and it looks like 
Ken Schrader is going to try and get under Sterling Wall for that fourth place position. Ooh, Bobby Allen Jr. runs up a little wide right there. He's pulling right to the underside of that 90 car. Ken Schrader is down the back stretch side by side now. Nobody is helping Schrader, and he's going to fall back. Davy Allison slots in line there. He's going to fall back to at least behind Davy Allison as of this moment. And now Davy Allison's going to drop down. He's going to make a big move. Davy Allison is trying, 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 trying to get back past these guys. You can't right now. You cannot make a move under one of these guys without help. And look at this. Bobby Allen Jr. said, you know what? Davy's down there. I'm going to do it. Now, Davy gets the pass on the 8. Slots back up in line, and now he's going to try and get the 90 on the outside. But now here comes some inside line help with this 25 and 7. Bodine and Schrader helping the 90 car. It's even. Look at Bobby Hillen Jr. leading that inside line next to Dale Earnhardt. Morgan Shepard charging in the front as we are 2 by 2 by 2 by 2 by. Watch out. Sterling Mullins looking to make it big. Ken Schrader making very aggressive moves right now, pushing that 90 car to the front. He is pushing. That car looks very fast, and Hillen slots up to second. Earnhardt gets tossed out of line three wide down off the tri-oval. Two by two for second now still. Davey Allison in the sucker hole middle lane. Jim, Jim Sauter is in the way back there. You see him there. Oh, Jimmy Spencer's looking to make it four wide. The aggression's picked right back up as Morgan Shepard paces the aggression of this field. Ken Schrader slots in the second. That car looks to be one of the strongest cars in this pack. Schrader. Cannot. The thing is, you get out to the front there, it's going to be kind of hard to get around the leader. you got to get a big build up and a big run with a car behind you. Someone goes with you. It's a good shot, but here comes the 90. He looks high, cannot make a move. Look at Kentry just yank that thing low. Dale Earnhardt going with him. Two cars versus two cars here. Mono e mono. Look at Earnhardt just pushing Schrader down the back stretch now. Side by side for the lead. Still side by side is Schrader and Morgan Shepard. Schrader and Shepard. Holding each other at each other's doors. Down in the three now. We got three cars in the inside, three cars on the outside. It looks like the inside line is going to get a better help as Jim Sauter. Jim Sauter is coming up there in the 89 car. And just like that, Ken Schrader is your new leader of the Daytona 500. Ken Schrader leads and Dale Earnhardt slots the inside now. Two by two for eight lanes. They are... Side by side, Dale Earnhardt hasn't won this race in his 15-year illustrious career. Coming off of two, he will take the lead here. We're only 40 laps in, though, of this 200-lap race. And Schrader pulls back out. But Earnhardt flying it back in there with help from Sterling Marlin. That car's damaged, and it's still going that fast. That's how the pack will do. Jim Sauter, underdog story. These guys have been side-by-side -side for laps now. No one can get an edge. This time by Schrader leads them. Schrader holds his position at, at the front with Earnhardt to the inside. Look at Derek Cope on the inside back there under Dick Trickle. Derek Cope, your 1990 Daytona 500 winner. He makes an aggressive move in the back of the pack as we continue through the the early laps of this 500, nearly a quarter way through now. Look at Jim Sauter yank it out wide, but the hole is immediately filled by Jimmy Spencer, making it three wide up the middle. Oh, it looks like the 21 got loose. Here comes that 90 to the inside of 21. Three wide lap traffic. Never mind. That's why we were getting crazy. Oh, man. Dale Earnhardt just pulls away with this thing. Only person to clear it. And we're going to see how far he pulls out before these guys catch him. It, look at this pack. Oh, my God. This looks vicious. When will someone get around these slow cars? Dale Earnhardt is just pull, running away with this thing as these cars are running slow. 
And here we go. Davy Allison shoving Morgan Shepard past the frenzy of lap cars. And Dale Earnhardt is going to get eaten alive here. Here we go. Closing on him at 13 miles an hour. Watch this on the helicopter cam. How fast they're closing in on him. What is Dale Earnhardt going to do here? Look how fast the closing rate is. And they're just going to fly by him on the outside. Morgan Shepard, Davy Allison back to the point. And Dale Earnhardt just gets blown by. That's what being alone, that's what happens when you're alone. And Dale Earnhardt is just going to start falling back now. Now here comes Ken Schrader, Bob B. Hillen Jr. Rusty Wallace with drafting up from Derek Cope. Never mind, he's betrayed him. Pack is still vicious back there. Terry Labonte has some issues or something in this race. Now here comes these guys drafting back on the two leaders. There, watch them get a run on them this time here. Watch this. Look at the run they're getting. They're side by side and they're getting that big of a run. Not going to be as big because they're side by side, but they had a huge run coming back on them here. And Shepard will lead this lap. The, f the fun that is watching this racing at Daytona here. As Morgan Shepard leads them and paces the field still. Five cars is the front pack. Then Derek Cope by himself with Rusty Wallace. Dick Trickle a lap down car. Mark Martin in eighth. Jeffrey Bodine in ninth. And Rodney Orr in tenth. Sterling Marlin at twelfth. Fifteenth, Jimmy Spencer. This field is starting to get spread spread out. And now they're slotting around and getting them by all these lap cars. Bob Brevik. Bob Bevik, or what the hell his name is pronounced in thirteenth. And here we go. Ken Schrader chasing down Morgan Shepard here. As we come to lap 44, and Ken Schrader is charging with drafting up from Bobby Hill and Jr. To the inside goes Schrader. And do we have more lap traffic coming? You're darn right we do. Ted Musgrave has some sort of issues with that car only going 165 miles an hour. Down the back stretch, side by side, two by two. Davy Allison yanks it out, three wide, and that's going to kill the inside line that was trying to make that move. But here comes Dale Earnhardt up the middle. He wants to try and make it. Never mind, he's going to make it three wide, and what's going to happen? Look at Dale Earnhardt all the way to the inside. Yeah, with Davy Allison. Impressive move, but they can't get it to work all the way. And the pack gathers right back up behind Ted Musgrave as Shepard yanks out to a large lead. Almost a quarter of the way through this race, and here comes the pack charging back down on Morgan Shepard. More lap traffic a uh, ways ahead yet. And here comes Dale Earnhardt, char hard charging with Davey Allison and Ken Schrader behind him. Two Fords on the outside, two Chevys on the inside. Down the back stretch they go, side by side again. It's Ford versus Chevys, and all the Fords are gathering on the high side. Now a Ford goes to the low side, three by three. Ken Schrader looking to make it three wide. Oh, man. Aggressive racing here. Who's going to lead this lap? Oh, I think it's going to be... Oh, I think it was Shepard by a little bit. And Schrader is shoving Earnhardt. I think Schrader's going to try and make it three wide for the lead here. Oh, no, no. Never mind. Guess who made it three wide? It's Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy Spencer. Charging hard. Under that position. Three wide for second. And then it's two wide for the lead. Mark Martin just slinks it from high to low. Four wide in the three. Now they're three wide. They ordered to organize it back out. Schrader goes from bottom to high side in a lap. In a, in a half a lap, matter of fact. Derek Cope hard charging up the middle. Morgan Shepard still leading this race. Morgan Shepard looking like he has probably one of the best cars here now after the wreck took out the best cars in this race. Morgan Shepard's car with the next best. Davey Allison in second. Dale Earnhardt in third. Morgan Shepard pacing the field in first. Dale Earnhardt trying to hold his own. Jimmy Spencer trying to help. Help. Down the three. Oh, 
Oh, they've got a big run on Morgan Shepard. Will he be able to block that low lane? He keeps throwing it lower, lower, lower. Not enough. Here comes the three car, Dale Earnhardt. Side by side again. Down to the front stretch. Bam, Earnhardt has the lead at the line. And look at Jimmy Spencer. He's, you noticed earlier, he's not afraid of making a three wide move. And he's going to try it again almost right there for the lead. And now the inside line kind of dying off a little bit because it's got three wide racing. And Derek Cope, I, every time I've looked at him, he is in the middle of a three wide situation. He is going for it. And Davey Allison pushes Morgan Shepard out back to a good lead here. And what will Morgan Shepard do? Block Davey Allison's attempts at a low lane pass. Coming to the line here. We'll be halfway through the race. Well, quarterway through the race. It's been an interesting race so far, to say the least. Very fast race. Three abreast with a 12 and the 98 and the 25. Now look at the 98. 98 is making a move up towards the front here. Derek Cope is getting closer and closer to the front as we keep watching this race. He's going to go three wide for second. Derek Cope with all from Bobby Hillen Jr. and Sterling Marlin. Here we go. Three by three. And Derek Cope is going to second place. Here he comes on Morgan Shepard. Derek Cope, Morgan Shepard, looks like they're going to be battling it out here as Shepard tries to throw a block on Cope to no avail. Cope gets the inside of him. Two by two for the lead. Shepard and Cope side by side. Derek Cope and Morgan Shepard. Bobby Hill and Jr. with the push. Sterling Mullen is back in the third, in the bottom lane and third on that bottom lane. Rodney Orr. Pushing his way up there, and here comes Mark Martin pulling the inside of Sterling Marlin. Side by side down the back stretch we go. Derek Cope, your leader. Chopping it low now as the 90 car looks under the 98. Bobby Hillen Jr. going under Derek Cope. Morgan Shepard sliding up high with help from Sterling Marlin. Bobby Hillen Jr. will be your new leader of the 1994 Daytona 500. Coming back to line now, it's going to be Cope still three wide for the lead. As we come off of the tri-oval now, Sterling Marlin on that low lane taking a look for the lead here. Cope still holding strong with help from Shepard on the outside. Cope gets clear of the three wide action and will have to control the three lane frenzy behind him. The rolling parking lot that is that as Cope could not block she bleh, could not block Shepard up to the top. And Shepard going back to the lead with Cope with no help from behind. Cope getting a big Loss of uh, position here as we come through turns three and four. No drafting help from behind. And here we come off of four. We have a bunch of lap cars we're coming up on. This front pack is getting antsy. Then the 25 looks high now as the 28 rides behind Morgan Shepard. And look at that three car draft in front of them here of lap cars. That's what they're going to be running into in just one second. Here we go. What's going to happen? How's this going to jumble up the field? What are they going to do? Shepard goes high on it. And the 27 blocks the... F wow! Wow! They're throwing blocks on the leaders. And now they're jamming up. Derek Cope. Huge run on the inside. Way low he goes. How low can Derek Cope go? Derek Cope can go low enough to get the lead. Off of turn three through four. Off of four now. Derek Cope, three abreast with lap traffic. But it's not for position as Cope is going to be your new leader of the Daytona 500. Derek Cope leads again. Sterling Marlin riding behind in, in second. Lake Speed is going to get third. Here comes Rodney Orr for fourth. And Rusty Wallace is going to ride out fifth if we keep these lanes normal. Oh, watch out here. It's getting kind of antsy with Darrell Waltrip being slow. All this slow traffic here. Single file racing in front here. They're trying to get clear of this lap traffic. Jim Sauter. Wow, they're getting really racy here. They're getting all getting around it. Derek Cope still leading. We're coming up on more lap traffic, though. Once again, as Derek Cope continues to lead the Daytona 500. 
Going for his second Daytona 500 is Derek Cope. Sterling Marlin trying to get his second win of his career. And the second win and his first win of the Daytona 500. He chops that thing low. Let's look at the back end of that thing in Sterling Marlin's car. That's how fast that car was when it wasn't damaged. That it's so fast now. Side by side behind lap traffic again now. Derek Cope has nowhere to go. These guys have been racing super aggressive. Look at Rodney Orr! Look at Rodney Orr! With help from the 12 and the 21. The 21 and the 12 side by side. Well, pushing each other. With Rodney Orr in front. Derek Cope leads. But it is a absolute mayhem right now. You could put a blanket over every car right now in the top 10. 0.34 separates the top 10. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not going to work. Four wide is not going to work. Oh, we're going to have to take an overview of this. Three and four wide. They're clearing. Sterling Mall to the point. Rodney Orr looking under Derek Cope for second. Four wide back here. You see it right there. Davy Allison. Lake Speed. Wow. Hold on to your hats, folks. It's crazy back here. Crazy in front. Crazy everywhere. Derek Cope back to the front. Derek Cope, Sterling Marlin. Oh, that was a, that's it. That's in it. Didn't have a wheel for a second there. Side by side for the lead still. My God, this race is amazing. Battling it out. Look at Jimmy Spencer to the bottom. Three wide. Rodney Orr on the top. And look at Morgan Shepard. He goes way high trying to get around Derek Cope. No lap traffic for a country mile yet. And Derek, and Derek Cope tries blocking Morgan Shepard up the track. And he just can't block. And he does hold him off at the moment. Here comes Sterling Mall on the inside, though. Derek Cope is having to block lanes like his life depends on it. Right now, it kind of does. Derek Cope holding off the field right now. This is impressive. And here he goes. He holds the middle lane. Here comes Dale Earnhardt under, this, under Morgan Shepard. Three wide. Up the middle goes Dale Earnhardt. Four wide almost goes Lake Speed. He's going to look high. He's holding it low. Wow. For second place. <laughs> Only three cars were separated by less than a one hundredth of a second. That's impressive. Here we go. Derek Cope holding it. He's blocking lanes still. As Dale Earnhardt looks to come to the inside of him, he's going to try and have to block that here. Can he block Earnhardt? This is impressive what Dale, what Derek Cope's doing right now. And that Kale Yarbrough Motorsports machine. The Morgan Shepard goes high right now. Oh, and he has been blocking, and he can't hold it off long enough. Morgan Shepard goes to the inside. Morgan Shepard just got a big enough run to do it, but can't clear off of two. Derek Cope hard charges back on the outside. Oh, Morgan's trying to clear up, but he just can't. Derek Cope holding it strong with help from Lake Speed and Rodney Orr. Dale Earnhardt looking to make it three wide. He does. Three wide for the lead. Off of four, three wide, Derek Cope, Morgan Shepard, Dale Earnhardt at the line this time by, it's going to be, wow, I don't know who that was, Mor Morgan Shepard, wow, top five were separated by less than a tenth of a second, and Sterling Marlow looking to make it four wide, I don't know if that's going to work, oh, that's not going to work, they wreck, the leaders wreck, 
That didn't work! Oh my god! Michael Waltrip avoids it. Derek Cope wrecked. Oh, back to the line. They're racing back, actually. Who's got the lead? Morgan Sterling Marlin, who made it four wide and caused that. Oh, maybe not for long. Here comes Bobby Hillen Jr. Who's going to have the lead back to the line? Back to the line under caution. It's going to be... Oh, Marlon got him. Marlon caused that wreck. I'm taking it four wide, and it just... Way too aggressive move. Wow. Derek Cope had a very fast car. Gets heavy damage. His race looks like it's going to be... A lot less, a lot less speed. Dale Earnhardt, heavy damage. Morgan Shepard, heavy damage. And once again, looks like Dale Earnhardt's 500 dreams. Go up and smoke. Let's take a look how that happened. And rub the salt in the wound. Ooh. See right here. Marlon puts it three wide off of exit. Um, Earnhardt gets loose, gets in the door of Shepard, hooks him, and just bam, bam. 15 piles in. Does a 37 avoid this? Oh, my God. 37 just gets clipped. Rusty Wallace with some amazing wreck avoidance right there going right around it. The 37, all he did was get doored, and he avoids it. The 12 avoids it. They're still wrecking. Look at the 30. Wow. Wow! That could have went really bad if those guys hit Morgan Shepard. Can we we need to ride on board Rodney Orr. That was an impressive wreck avoidance by Rodney Orr. Being right behind this. He got, he got touched in the door, but he's still fine. Wow! That's impressive. Again, he got touched in the door. No, he didn't. I don't even think he got... I think he... I don't even think he got touched. I don't think he did. Take a look here. He never touched the guy in front of him. I think he got, like, nipped. Didn't even affect his car. This is the true moment here. Is he hit? No, I don't think he ever did. Well, that's interesting. Alright. We're going to go back green fly racing here. We got, we're going to have 65 of 200 done. Just over a quarter of the way through the race. And Bobby Hillen Jr. is leading the race after another wreck takes out more front running drivers like Dale Earnhardt and other people. Let's take a look here. Who's out of this race so far? Is the 30, I'm assuming the 19's out. Is the 5 car out? Uh, the 5 car, I can see the 5 car, I'm an idiot. 3 car? Dale Earnhardt is out of the 500. He will have to wait till 1995 to see if he can finally claim his first 500. Morgan Shepard's still in the race. Let's see, there's 17 there. 18. There's all your drivers. There's about... There's still just about over half the field left, I think. I hope. We've had a lot of early wrecks take out a lot of drivers in this race so far. And Bobby Hillen Jr. is leading the 500. Um, Let's go through some more stats here while we're waiting. 1986 Daytona 500 winner Jeffrey Bodine is in third. He's the highest running 500 winner. And then next one is Davey Allison. And then I think that's it. We only have two two past 500 winners in the top 10 right now. Bobby Man Jr. has never won one. He's only won one race in his career. So I'm on the same. Only won one race in his career. Rusty Wallace, 1989 champion, but never has won a 500. If you can claim one today, that would be pretty impressive. And um, who the heck is 
Ken Schrader, too. He's had a pretty fast car today. He wants to get his first 500. And his first win since 1991 at Dover. Pace cars turning right again. And a lot of lap traffic on the inside. A lot of lap traffic. Almost half, almost, it's been almost 50 50 with the field being lapped and not. And here we go. Green's back in the air. We're racing. Side by side through turn one, through turn two. The lap traffic keeping steady right at the moment with, with Dick Trickle on that inside line. And they're going to pull out, pull, not pull out. They're going to pull away on the back stretch on the outside line here. Here we go back down to three. Bobby Hill and Jr. holding hot, holding hot strong at the moment. Blech. And here comes the eight car slides way up the racetrack and maybe three wide through the try over here. We've seen how three wides worked out about every other time this this week today. Um, four wide actually. Davy Allison pulling out three wide on the outside now too. Side by side for the lead now. Here comes Sterling Marlin. That car has a banged up back bumper and he's going for it. Three wide behind the leader Jeffrey Bodine. Right there as well. Look at Daryl Waltrip. We are already getting very aggressive again. We were relatively conservative for the first 20 laps. The only reason why we had a big wreck on lap 23 was because a bunch of lap traffic backing up the field. Other than that, we were relatively green and clean. And we're getting, we've been getting really aggressive now. And here we go. It is a thick pack right here. Look at this. Oh, they're going to try four wide, I think. Oh, wow. That is some tight racing right there. Bobby Hill and Jr. still leading at this moment. So we're now completing 67 of 200 here. This pack is thick, it's strong, and it is going for it. Coming through here, three wide throughout most of this pack. Jeffrey Bodine on the inside of Bobby Hill and Jr. for the lead. I'm going to take that window down because I still like looking at it. Bobby Hill and Jr. trying to hold strong. Well, I should keep it up now, actually, if I think about it. And Bobby Hill and Jr. holds strong on the outside with help from... Sterling Marlin and Davey Allison and Mark Martin too. Three wide in the back here. Oh, ooh, Davey Allison drops the inside here of that eight car. He's going to try and get under him here. He will. And now Jeffrey Bodine trying to go for the lead here. And the remnants, he had, that's his own spot. That's his own team that he is racing for. Davey Allison going up the middle. Three wide. Wow, they're going to be four wide. Oh, no. No, they are four wide. Oh, no, 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 no. We saw this went. That's, this could take out the rest of the field if they mess up. Oh, no. <laughs> Dick Trickle's leading the pack. He's trying to get his lap back. Oh, my God. Three wide for the lead and four wide for third and fourth. This is intense. Oh, man, they're four wide. They're still four. Don't shoot for it again. Oh, they're right there. Oh, 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 he got wreck! No, he saved it! What a save! Davey Allison! The save of the 1994 Daytona 500. The field is spread out now. Jimmy Spencer. Going for I Oh, my. Lap 69. Davey Allison just saved a wrecked race car. I don't believe it. That is unbelievable. Holy, oh my God. Ken Schrader to the lead over Jimmy Spencer. Here comes more lap traffic now. Well, not lap traffic. Here comes more drivers trying to come up here. Oh, I, I can't believe that. That was, that was incredible. We're, we stay green. However, the field is strung out now, and then look at this. Jeremy Mayfield with help from Jim Sauter on the inside line. Drafting to the front with Bob Bevick, the 34. With all these cars wrecked out, underdogs are coming into the picture now. Jeremy Mayfield in the first 500. Coming to the front, Jim Sauter as well. I just... 
Bobby Allen Jr. That's on, that's on our dog we talked about that's been running really good. Who's been leading. Bobby Allen Jr. In that Harry Melling machine. Not Harry Melling, is it? I don't know what the hell that car is. We're three wide here now. Oh, they're looking to make it four wide. Three by three now. Look at Jeremy Mayfield. He's on the lead lap, too. We haven't seen him much at all today, Jeremy Mayfield. And he is roaring through this field right now. Man. Ken Schrader leading still. He's been pacing the field at the moment. Looks like he has one of the better cars here today. As the rest of the pack here has just been th three abreast for the most part. Any lap traffic coming up here? Morgan Shepard, who's a wounded car. He's, he's in the first car. They're going to come across the lap. And, man, it looks like Ken Schrader's starting to pull away. Huh. Pack is thick and hungry. Bobby Allen Jr. pulls away from the big pack here. And he's going to get a huge run on Ken Schrader. Schrader's going to start blocking here. Schrader, the lone wolf of the Hendrick cars, left. We saw Terry Labonte. He was down and out with... Oh, no. Here we go. Oh, man. Moore and Shepard's going to hold four wide. That's not going to work. Four by four here. Off of four. Yep, yep, here we go. Yep. I don't think many cars got tucking on that. That wasn't because of them racing too aggressive. That was because the lap traffic just absolutely backed them up. And we are under caution yet again. Oh, man. Well, that sucks. Let's fast forward here. We're going to go look back at the Davy Allison save, by the way. Here, I'll just watch some pit stops here. Then we're going to pit. Oh, we're going to pit. Oh, my gosh. Every man, woman, and child's going to pit. Morgan Shepard wins the race off pit lane. Hmm. All right. I'm going to take a look back at Davy Allison's incredible save here on lap 69. Let's take a look here. Back up here a little bit. This is so impressive. I mean, I, I can't believe this. Four wide. I think Rusty slides up the racetrack here. Slides up just a little bit. Watch, watch that gap close. He slides up and he nicks Davy right there. And that gets Davy loose. Yep, right there. He slams off the eight car. The yeah, car hits, rides the wall. Wow, I, I can't believe that. I mean, that is impressive. Real time. Wow, I I mean, that that's wrecked. That's wrecked. And he saved that. I don't... I don't believe that. There's swerve marks from him. Sterling Marlin. Has been banged, beaten, and slammed all day today. That may put some side damage on Davy Allison from wrecked race car. It's pretty good. On board with him. We're right on board with him here. This is pretty. I'm just impressed by this. Damn, yeah, I fast forward too far back. Just. I'm just. That's that's surprising. Anyway, let's go back to up to the front here. That's actually I think Schrader was leading and the caution came out. Do 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 Oh whoops, whoops, whoops okay, well, well let's not see that. <laughs> oh god. Morgan Shepard's the first car a lap down the outside on the outside. He's on the tail end of the lead lap. This is not going to end well. So, Morgan Shepard's going to be first car on the tail end of the lead lap. Ken Schrader in front. Oh, no. Jim Sauter's in third, by the way. I just want to point that out. Jerry Mayfield's in fifth. 
Rodney Orr is in eighth. So my car has been wrecked out. All right, here we go. Let me get back ready to go green flag racing again. Here we go, pace cars off. We're not even halfway through this race yet. And we're going back racing. Oh my god, they're three wide for the lead. And look who's trying to take the point. Look at this. It's freaking Jim Sauter. Go. Go, Jim Sauter. Jim Sauter. Come on, Jim Sauter. He's going for the lead. And he can't get it because of Morgan Shepard. Oh, man. They are stuck up. Oh, man. They're going to be three wide coming back to the flag here. Oh, who's going to have the lead? Oh my gosh, with this lap traffic, it's jamming up the field so much. That was... I think that was Ken Schrader that time by. Man, this is incredible. This is this is really, really good race. race. <clears throat> oh God, I keep, my voice keeps cracking. Ugh. Oh my God, Ken Schrader! Look at that movie pulled up there. He went pulled right from the behind of Daryl Waltrip and just went for it. Holy smokes. We got Bobby Hill and Jr. leading the race right now. But look at this. They're going to split Michael Waltrip. Oh, Bobby Labonte is confused. He doesn't know which way to go. And that Bill Davis machine. And Ken Schrader is just going to be... I'm going to take this back now. And Ken Schrader is just going to start... Yanking away with it here. Nope, Bobby Hill Jr. is going to follow him through. Huh. Man, this race has been very, very good so far. But, I mean, we got to imagine we're going to settle down into a long green flag run here eventually. We're going to run out of cars for ca <clears throat> cars before the end of this race. I cannot stop my voice from breaking. Okay, I think there's... I think there's 30 cars left on the racetrack. Yeah, 30 cars left on the racetrack. Uh-oh, Kyle Petty's spinning. That's not good. We're kind of single filing out a little bit now. Hmm. No, well, Ken Schrader's leading at this moment. We got Bobby Hill Jr. falling in mind. I'm here. It's pretty much single file for the most part. A pretty calm race. Not really. It's been very exciting. It's I've been jumping out of my seat for about 95% of it. And, um, yeah, there are three wide in the back there. Let's take a look at that. Wow, this is pretty good. Yeah, look at them go. Look at them go. They are going after it there. And I, I mean, Jeremy Mayfield has been doing a really, really good job in this race. They're pretty much starting to single file out now. Put the top 10 up here. That's pretty much going pretty well here. Wow. This pretty much been... Ken Schrader's pretty much pulled out to a lead now, and he's pretty much holding it over Bobby Hill and Jr. That's probably the calmest this race has been so far. Man. Wow. Three wide in the back there with Bob Bob Bevick and It's Bob well Bob Brevik. I thought there was no R. Well I'm just stupid then. Um can I pull up some stats here while we're racing here? I think we should pull up some stats. Let's do some stats here while while we're racing here. We'll fill some time here. If I miss a wreck, by the way, I'm just going to because I'm looking up stuff on, looking up some of my 
<clears throat> some of my statistical information here in about this series and other tidbits of great info. Let me shuffle up my notebooks here. I'll put these back over here. Grab my binder containing most of my Davy Allison stats and information that I have assembled over the series so far. That is an iPad charger. It does not need to be here. This is the right side of the notebook. Okay. Uh, there's a race for lead, isn't there? Oh, Jimmy Spencer second now. Um, Jimmy Spencer. We'll talk about Jimmy Spencer. Some statistical facts about Jimmy Spencer. So, do you know who Jimmy Spencer used to race? Um, back in the modified series. I didn't know this, by the way. This is I haven't looked up anything yet. So, hold your applause. Um, Jimmy Spencer used to race back in the modified series back in the day. I think he's actually a modified champion. That's how he got into the Cup Series. Um, and has been racing in the series. I don't know how long Jimmy Spencer has been racing in the series for. Let's take a look how long he's been racing in the series for. Man. Oh, man. Look at Sterling Mullen, by the way. He has scraped the wall. Been rear-ended. Destroyed. That car is still running fast. And Jim Sauter, by the way, as well. If Jim Sauter were to win the 1994 Daytona 500, I would give up. Because he doesn't have very good ratings. It's just that, oh my god, there's slow traffic helping him be able to win this 500. Oh man. And just like that, there goes Jim Sauter's hopes of possibly winning the 500 as he gets held up behind lap traffic. And we're back to single file racing. Man. They come flying through here. Let's take a look here. Jimmy Spencer. What about Jimmy Spencer? Well, Jimmy Spencer was born in Pennsylvania. That I do know. Um, there's a Jimmy Spencer Jr. Huh. I'll be damned. Yeah, they're single file right now. <laughs> now Kitcher does rear end damage, I just realized. He was born in Berwick, Pennsylvania. Um, he has been racing in the series full time since 1990. Actually, 1989. He ran part time in 1989. 17 to 29 races. Um, so this is, in fact, Jimmy Spencer's. Oh, man. Harry Gant's here now. I'm um, hitting Harry Gant in his last 500. Um, this is Jimmy Spencer's, how many 500s has he been in? He was in the 1990, 1990 was his first 500. Okay, they're back, by the way. And Jimmy Spencer's going back for second place on Sterling Marlin. So 1999 was his first 500, 1990 was his first 500. Did he race the 1992 500? Do you only, why did he race part-time in 1992? He de would a lot from what I'm saying here. No, not a lot. Um, he's only raced one, two, three. This is his fourth 500. So Jimmy Spencer trying to win his his um five his first 500 and his fourth 500 start for that Bobby Allison more sports car. Um, he has he won two races last year. I do remember that. Um, pretty interesting races. He won at, I believe it was, let me flip back here. Notes. He won at Charlotte. I know that one. And he, where was that? Where did he get the first one? I forgot where he got the first one at. Where the hell was this? Oh, God, where was that? Oh, Richmond in a fuel mileage race. He got his first one in a Richmond fuel mileage race, and they got another one in Charlotte. So that's how that's how his career's been so far. Um, And he finished last year, I believe. Let me flip back through my notes. That's Dale Earnhardt winning the race. The last race of the season, if you remember that. He finished...
Eighth. Eighth in points. Wow, he did pretty good in points last year. Good man too in real life. Ready to finish his real life in points in 1993. Oh, come on. Don't be a... Don't, don't irritate, don't irritate me. Let me go back here a little bit. We'll watch some, you can watch some racing as I'm bringing up random facts. Um, driver standings. Come on now. Come on now, talk to me. Um, 12th. So finished 8th instead of 12th. I believe that's why I kept his ride. I believe that is the main reason why he kept his ride. And what is happening here? Oh, my God. There's more lap traffic. Oh, man. And here comes Davey. Oh, no. No, no, no. Jimmy. Jimmy, I was just talking about how good you were. Don't wreck everyone. Come on. There you go. You calm down now. Been relatively green pretty far here. Maybe we can actually make it. Oh, well, we're going to kill everybody again here. Here we go. Let's kill everybody. Four wide. That, that, that always works out here. Oh, my gosh. No, they filed it out. They filed it out. They filed everything out. We're good. We're back to clean and green. Jim Solder's still running third. You know what we're going to bring up? Let's bring up Jim Solder. Bring up Mr. Jim Sauter. There's a Jim Sauter Jr. We're all from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Wow. Oh yeah, Jim Sauter passed away a few years ago. I forgot about that. Um. He had a hell of a mustache. Like, damn, that's a good mustache. Anyway, um, man, he died on Halloween. Jeez. He was born June first. Actually, his birthday. At the time of recording, this was a few days ago. Happy birthday, Jim. Solder. Um, dang. Uh, oof. Um. Jim Solder is 51 in this 500. Holy smokes. It's as old as Morgan Shepard. Eighth and second. Did he ever win anything? No, he never won in the top three series. Mm, he never won anything. On racing reference, on racing reference. Huh. Interesting. But, now let me talk about Ken Schrader. Ken Schrader has not won a race in a very, very long time. Ever since... 1991 Dover. As a matter of fact, it was the last time he won a race. And here comes Rusty Wallace. Now, Ken Schrader has not won since 1991 Dover. As a matter of fact, 1991, that's where he got two victories. He won Atlanta that year in Dover. Like I said, 100 times before this. Ever since that race, he has, got, he has gone, you know, I can't count how many races. So, ever since that win, he has gone almost 20 top five since that last victory. He's at 20. And here comes Jimmy Spencer to the lead here. He's up from Davey Allison. But he, but man, Kendra looks like he has a strong car to win this 500 today. This could be his, huh. mm, this could be his day. He is a multiple 500 pole winner. He's won the pole multiple times for 500. And um, maybe today he could finally get scratch off on the, on the uh, to-do list instead of winning the pole 500. Jimmy Spencer's leading now at the moment. Um, but man. Ken Schrader can hold that car on the outside. Really, really good. Like, really, really good. But, no one's going down there, no one's going up there to help him. And just like that, Jimmy Spencer to the point with Davey Allison pushing. 
Two Fords push around the Chevrolet. And they slot right up in front of him. Wow. And there goes Ken Schrader right back under him. Wow. That car's strong, Ken Schrader's is. Look at this. Pretty much by himself at the moment. He just blew by Davey. And here he comes to pass Jimmy. Wow, here he comes. No, but Davey's giving him a little pushback on the outside there. Wow. Jimmy Smith. Oh, man. Man, Ken Schrader. That car is fast. Holy smokes. He's going for it. He's going high this time. We're almost halfway through the 500, finally. He's been relatively clean and green for the most part. Davy Al's now going for the lead. Hmm. All right. Three wide here. With Jimmy Spencer leading. Wow. Hmm. Jimmy Spencer in real life. Let's do some real life stuff facts here. One in 1994. Both of his races he won in his career. His only two races he won in his career in this season that we're simulating right now. That we're starting right now. He won a Talladega race and a Daytona race. Not the Daytona 500. He won the 400. And right now, um, he's trying to get more wins than what he originally had. Oh, my God. They blew up on that car. And those cars go so much slower. How much slower is he going? He's going 30 miles an hour slower. Than the field. My God. Almost halfway through this race. And there, Ken Schrader is back to the lead now. Next time by, we'll be halfway. And I'm thinking. Let's take a look here. Ken Schrader's probably led the most laps so far today. And it looks like he's going to keep adding to that. Jerry Mayfield in fourth. He's doing pretty good today. And let's take a look here. And Ernie Irvin led 14 laps early. Jeff Gordon led two. Rick Wilson only led one. Kenny Wallace only led one. Um, and Morgan Shepard has led 26. Derek Cope led eight. So when he was out here in Dale Earnhardt led two. And ever since then, we've had pretty much Ken Schrader dominating so far. So far. Halfway through the race. 250 miles down, 250 miles to go. It's been the longest green flag run we've had today. A total of 37 lean changes so far in this race. Oh my god. And we have lap traffic coming. Something close to 37. Um, what the heck stats is that that I wrote down? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Wow, they, um... Arrogant's back in the field now, and oh god, we got a caution. That's why we've got a caution. I probably was looking away and didn't even see a wreck that happen. Uh oh, oh no, Bobby Hill and Jr. No, no, oh, and Bobby Labonte. The Bobbies took each other out. Oh no, I wonder what happened. Let's see who's gonna pit. Actually, probably gonna be old. Let's see if we think about it here. Yeah, pit now. 
And they probably have to make it on two more stops. If this, they pit now, they only have two more stops left. We're in green to the finish. And once again, we got another caution in this 500. Here we go. Back down pit lane. Who's going to win the race off? And, of course, it's Ken Schrader. There you go. There's the rest of them. Um, so let's go take a look back. Where the heck is... Let me go look at Bobby, Bobby Hill and see what happened to him. Yeah, Bobby Hillen's out. What the heck happened to Bobby? So he was driving fine. He was an eighth. Having a good day. Having a good, nice little Sunday drive. He's doing fine. Everything's great. Oh my god, that's slow traffic. Oh! Yeah, I knew that slow traffic was going to get the best of him. Oh, man! Ooh. Oh, that hurts. That killed his car. It killed both of their cars. Like Bobby's, the Bobbies killed each other. Let's take a look here. Let's zoom out. Let's go high picture. Yeah, just... I mean, they're going so much slower that, you know... And then... Pow! 22 had nowhere to go, man. That sucks for him. That killed both of their good runs that they were having. Well, not 22. 22 was probably having a really bad run, but... We'll disregard that. And, um, yeah... Uh, it's probably that the 22 drove away and the 90 couldn't. Either way, let's get back to uh, where, what the heck's his face. We're down to less cars on the track now. Let's, um... Alright, so we're going back green again. Really, the field didn't change very much, so I think we have a couple positions. Oh, man. Man, there is not very many cars left. We're down to We're down to how many cars left on lead lap? Only fourteen. Dang. This has been a race of attrition. Attrition. How do you spell attrition? A T T R I T I O N. Attrition. Yeah, I can be in the spell and B. Let's see if that's actually right. Let me Google that. How to spell not metabolism. Why is that a recommended thing? Attrition. And French. I think I spelled it right. A T T R I T O N. Attrition. Is that how you spell it? Yeah. That's the right term. The action or process of gradually reducing the strength or effectiveness of someone or something through sustained attack or pressure. Ooh. Origin. It's Latin. 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 Atterrier. To rub. <laughs> Atterrier. I, I can't pronounce. I don't. I can't pronounce Latin. I just probably slaughtered that. <laughs> um, yeah. Use over time. Wow, damn, people in the 1990s really loved the, the word attrition. Holy hell. Like, it picked up in the 70s, but 90s, it was like at its peak. And then it's been kind of dying down since then. Not much, I mean... They used the word attrition a heck of a lot more than they used to use it back in the day, I guess. Well, my question is, how do they know that? Are they going around in, like, 1857? And, like, walking around? How many times have you said the word attrition? It's an attrition to do this. We're watching a 1994 500. I'm talking about the history of the word attrition. Um... So Ken Schrader. Oh. <laughs> yeah, at least five, nine top fives. How many top fives have he had since his last one? Let's, let's count that up. So he's had nine at least. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 
So he's at least 16. Now I gotta go through my history here. So you keep watching as I as I figured out this stat here. Um, 16. That's not one. That's not one. That's not. Oh no, 17. 18. Um, 19. Oh man, we're getting we're getting going now. 20. 21. 22. Twenty three. Oh, my gosh. Twenty four. Twenty four top five since his last victory. Dang. Twenty four top fives in the span of um, twenty nine plus twenty nine plus eighteen. It's forty eight. 59. 24 top fives in 59 races. That's that's actually a pretty good re track record. I mean, you're going to top five almost 50% of the time. Well, just under 50% of the time. You know, hold on a second. Let's, let's calculate that. So 59 races divided by well, 24 divided by 59 times 100 for percentage. So in the last, ever since Kid Trader's gotten a victory... 40% of the time he finishes inside the top five. How has he not won? Like, seriously. How has Ken Schrader not won at least one more time since then? I, I don't get that. Oh my god. <laughs> I look up and frickin' Jimmy Spencer almost died. How do you not win when you get a top five 40% of the time? So... I don't get that, man. I mean, let's compare that to the percentage of, um... No. Let's compare that to 1993... Mr. Driver Standings. Double Dine is in second now. The rookie. His first 500. I believe that's this is his first 500. Uh, um... Compare that to Dale or not. His percentage of top fives in 1993. Oh, and 60 races. My mistake. 60 races. It's been 60 races since Ken Schrader's last one race. So last year, or in real life, Dale Earnhardt got 17 top fives in 30 races. So 56% of the time he was getting top fives. He had six wins. Hey, wow. Hmm. World of confusion. Ken Schrader needs to get a freaking win. We got the we got the fifty up here. We got division twenty five. And this field is spaced out. This has kind of died off. It's been, really, it's been competitive still. It's been pretty competitive with how many cars are left after. I, I, it's not that the field was as much of a, like, over-aggressive as it was that every time we'd have a AI back up, like a, you know, a slow lap car back up the field, we would just, it would cause them to go four wide because they were going so much slower and they would cause a huge wreck. That's the reason why... It, we don't have any cars left. It's not that they were driving over aggressive. Cause I I tuned them down quite a lot. This they this is basically what they came with the default track. Hmm. You know Al Unser Jr. participated in a um race in nineteen ninety three? Yeah, he participated in the Daytona five hundred for Rick Hendrick. He crashed on lap 157. Same race last year. He's here in the grandstands watching right now. We're going to clip to him right now. Not really. Not really. I'm just going to... Career stats for All-Answer Jr. Won NASCAR Cup start. USAC Champ Car Series. 
They only had one race for like five years. Or like ten years. It was champ cars in such bad shape. Hmm. USA Gold Crown Series. USAC. Dang. Only two races in 1983. That was Indy 500, of course. One of them was. Hendy Quinn. A dirt track. They didn't do a race in 84. Nah, that's kind of surprising. 85, Indy 500, Danny Sullivan. And here comes the field back. Bobby Ray Hall in 86. These are Indy 500 winners. Al Unser. Didn't Al Unser Jr. win a 500? The Indy 500, I should say. Uh, okay, we're not going to keep going through that. Let's take a look at some Todd Budine facts here. So Todd Bodine, 1994. He took over that car. He was going to run that part-time with Dick Trickle last year, actually. But um, what happened was, uh, sadly, Brett Bodine passed away at, um, in a crash at Watkins Glen. And Trickle moved over full-time to that car. And Bodine took over full-time for us that year. But let's scroll down here. This is his first full-time season. For Todd Bodine. The, he's 30 years old. Is this his first 500? Is this his first 500? This is his first 500. This is Todd Bodine's first 500. He's showing very, very well so far. Very, very well. so far oh, we're coming up on more lap traffic this looks to be enjoyable oh my gosh they're going at it Albo Nine is a seven-time winner in the Bush, Bush Series. As a small in the Bush Series. And 1992 finished third in points in the Bush Series to Mr. To Mr. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Who the heck did he finish like two, third two in points? Who won the 1992 championship? I want to say, didn't Nemechek won at 92? I think Nemechek won at 92. He did. I got it right. Ah. Wow. <laughs> Nemechek only won that championship by three points. Over Bobby Labonte. And then there's Top of Dime back 63. And then Jeff Gordon almost 222 points back. I wonder if Jeff Gordon won that championship. Imagine if he won that championship. The young gun. He rocked out of the 500 early. <laughs> well, here comes Ken Schroeder back to the point here. It looks like top of nine. Not top of nine. Jimmy Spencer took it for a second. And didn't even lap. Because here comes back Jimmy Spencer. Well, I mean, Ken Schroeder. Um, who else is up there? Um, let's talk about Davey Allison a little bit here. So, Davey Allison, his rookie year was 1980, he's from Hueytown, Alabama, he is 1987 was his rookie year, running part-time, well, not running part-time, well, basically running full-time, but dnq would some races, didn't do some, too, too, didn't do too, too good, um, dnq would a did dnq huh. <sighs> I'm sorry there. 
in DNQ, but he just didn't have a um, a great time. He did have two wins in his rookie year. He was a pretty good driver. Um, coming into this year, oh man, jeez, he'll be turning 33. Well, he just turned 30. He's gonna be turning 33 here in a couple weeks. Davey Allison is. Um. So, happy birthday to him. He'll be 33 years old. And, oh, he is going three wide for second. Speak of the devil. Um, here he goes for first. Can he get it? They're about halfway through a fuel run right now, and there's only five cars battling for the leader. They pulled away from everybody else. Todd but I keeps it as Jimmy's, as uh, Ken Schrader pushes him. Wow. Hmm. All right. Man, Davey Allison does not have a single Xfinity win. That's kind of surprises me. I thought he would have at least a couple. Guess not. Yeah, that's right. He has come into this season. Davy Allison has finished in points second. And they finished third in 92 and 91. But finished second in points last year. And comes in he 94 looking to see if he can finally get that championship that's eluded him for the last two, or actually three years, how, because in 92, he lost it by a pretty slim margin, 91, how much did he lose at 91 by, I was curious about that, we always talk about Davey Allison missing championships, let's see, driver standings in 1991, um, Oh, he had no chance at it, pretty much. Uh, it, was, it wasn't a big loss. Kind of like last year. Well, he had a chance to go into the final race before it, but... He lost it by 199 points. Did he have a chance going into the race for it? Then he won the pole for 1991 500 and the second, and the second race of the season. He won... Five races in 1991. Hmm. Crew chief was Larry McReynolds. Good old Larry. Crew crew chief right now for the 500 right now as Davey Allison takes the lead. There's 75 laps to go here in the 1994 500. Ken Scherer trying to go back to point. Down the back stretch now. We go here, trying to keep the point as of this moment. Um, Davy Allison, what about Davy Allison here? So, some more stuff on Davy Allison here. Can I see his career statistics, please? All right, Davy Allison. What was I saying here? Oh yeah, um, won two races in '87, two races in '88, two races in '89. Finally got a five-one season in 1991, where he finished third in points. 1992, almost won the championship. Finished third in points, however, because of Bill Elliott and, you know, Alan Kowicki. Rest in peace, Alan Kowicki. 5-5. Um, five, five. And then he got a win in 1993. And then got, I believe, three more in the later, latter end of the season last year. Um, yeah. Won Slick 5500 at the, the second to last race of the season. Won the... Um, last, second to last, the, the second North Wilkesboro race, and then won the, the photo finish that was the, what the heck was it? You know, the, the second Martinsville race. So that's, that's Davey Allison's little career statistics here. Now let's take a look here. 
I want to take a look at some more stuff here about Davy Allison. Um, he has won Phoenix the last three consecutive years. He won it in 91, he won it in 92, and he won it last year in 93. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And they are going to blow right by Ken Schrader. <laughs> there goes all of them. Davy Allison won the 1992 Daytona 500 by leading 127 laps. Some Daytona 500 facts, by the way. Some Daytona 500 facts, by the way. So, last year's Daytona 500, the 1993 running of this Great American race. Um, was won, of course, by Dale Jarrett. The person who led the most laps, Dale Earnhardt, did not come away with the victory. So keep that in mind. Another thing. Which currently is Ken Schrader, who's not leading the race. He has led the most laps today. Um... However, Davey Allison was the last driver to win the race who did lead the most laps. For Davey Allison, in the last two, this sounds, Larry, this sounds extremely like Larry Mack here, in the, last, in the last three Daytona 500s, the person who led the most laps only once won, and that was Davey Allison. Ooh, that's that's at least the last three. Only once has won the Daytona 500. Oh my gosh, um, last four only once. Dura Copa only led five laps and his 500 win. So once in the last four 500s. How about how about in the last five 500s? Last five five hundreds only in the last five five hundreds only once has the driver who's led the most laps won. Ken Schrader in nineteen eighty nine led over a hundred laps in the five hundred and failed to win it. And he's getting close to approaching he and at this pace he's getting close to a beat to approach that number. Let's see, in the last six. Take a look at the last ten five hundreds. Um, in the last six 500s, this is great. I love this. So in the last six 500s, only twice has the per has the person who's led the most laps won the 500. And both of those times, it was Davey Allison and Bobby Allison. See how far the stat goes back. Last seven five hundreds. No, I Bill Elliott won leading the most laps in nineteen eighty seven. Alright. So in the last six five hundreds, only twice has the person who's won, who led the most laps, has gone on to win the race. Hmm. So that's a little interesting fact. Oh, Richard Petty finished third in the 587. Interesting. I thought that kind of went down the pooper after he won the second 200th race. Hmm. This is, of course, the second 500 since. The legend of Prey retired. Wow. Well, Penshire continues to lead. And stack up the most laps led here. Like I said, and last time he he, led, he has led 100 laps in the 500 before, back in 1989. But he lost on fuel mileage to Daryl Waltrip. So 
so that's 87. I don't know what's in there. I drove the 28, 1987. Davy. Oh. Uh oh, more. We, we're coming on the lap traffic again. Ow. Three wide for the lead. No way. Yeah. Uh, look at Davy Allison go for the lead. Here we go. Man, look at how bent the valence is on Kyle Petty's car. These guys are going for it right now. We have 65 laps left, and it is starting to get a little bit into crunch time here. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Ken Schrader. Oh, that's not going to work, I don't think. As, Rust as Davey Allison takes the lead with help from Rusty Wallace. Here we go. There they go. They're out to the they're out to the point now. We've had a we've had a pretty long green flag run here. It's about 30 laps now. Hmm. It's the longest screen flag run of the day. And last year the longest screen flag run we had in the 1993 500 was Let's rattle off some more facts here. Last time we had the last time we had this long green flag run in 19 in, in last the longest green flag run we had in the 1993 500. 1993 was 115 laps from lap 16 to 130. I don't think we'll be getting to that. There has been a caution free 500. We have never, we don't, we're not going to get that one today. We've already had, I think, six or seven cautions. But we have run green for 30. We could run green for the second half of this race. Hmm. And who ended that long green flag run of 115 laps? In the 1993-500. Nobody but Mr. Number 8 car, Sterling Marlin. Who spun in the trial. And there they go. Right by Davy Allison. Todd Benign to the point now. And never mind. <laughs> Ken Schrader does not care. He wants to get back to the point. Oh man, here comes Jimmy Spencer. I think I think Tom Bynes gonna get the lead here because the inside line is pretty good here. Never mind, everyone just went with freaking. They just betrayed him. Bye. What happened to Ru Oh, oh, oh! We have a caution. <laughs> there comes the long green flag run. The long green flag run has come to an end. Oh, man. Wait. What are you doing, Rusty? Rusty's pushing the pace car. Tell you what, Rusty Wallace is getting bored. He is pushing the pace. Huh. Okay, Rusty. Well, let's, um, let's fast forward here. Kind of curious what happened. Oh, there goes Rusty. He just decided to murder the pace car instead of pushing it. Um, oh, we have a split strategy here. Ken Schrader's going to stay out? Why? He. I mean, we've run over... We've run almost 40 laps on, you know, gas. Or probably He's probably almost out of gas. I think he's going to try and run strategy so he can make it on one more stop. Because if you pit now, I think you can split it 30 laps. But, you know, you can run easily 30 laps here. If you pit now, just go 30, 30, you should be fine. I mean, they've run, they ran almost 40 laps here. And now there you come. Now here he comes with the lap cars. What the heck? And there he goes. Hmm. Interesting. Now, what caused this caution? That's what I'm curious about. 
Let's go back here. Let's go up to who our new leader is. I don't know who our new leader is. Um, what caused this yellow? I'm honestly curious. I am bedazed. But I'm dazed at what caused this yellow flag. And this is, we're going to fast forward a ways back, aren't we? Yes, we are. Back to when Rusty was pushing the pace car. Back in time. Like a turn back time. All right, back up here. Um. Oh, found it. <laughs> oh, what happened? Oh, pitting. Oh, cars were pitting, and people panicked, and were just like, Arr! and then, yep. Wow, good job at Rodney Orr to avoid that. Their wall trip. Wow, EW. EW with a wreck avoidance, baby. Let's take a look at DW. He didn't even let out. He was just... He he didn't care. Hold on one second. Let me look at this roof camera here. I mean, he just... He held it in. He never let out. I think he maybe burped it. Take a look at this. Spin. Chunks of metal flying. He never let out. Oh, no, he did at the end there, but he never gave any care in the world. What the heck? They're under caution that he's still going. That's amazing. That's amazing. Anyway, let's, um, let's kind of skip out here a little bit. Okay, let me, okay, new leader's rusty. Oh, because he pitted before the caution came out. No, wait. Yeah, New Leader's rusty. He pitted before the caution came out. So he's going to be able to come around here. He didn't, luckily, he didn't get put a lap down. Wow. That that was a big break for Rusty. He's going to be the new leader of this race. Wow. Impressive. Interesting things here. We're getting into the final quarter of this race. The final... Um. 125 miles here. We're getting ready to go back. Green flag racing. It's getting into go time here. Here we go. So Rusty's leading now. Let's take let's take a look. Let's give you some information on Rusty Wallace here. So let's forget let's not forget about how what happened to Rusty last year in this race. He barrel rolled down the back stretch here in an incredible crash. Um but came back right in the next week and kept going. He's had some, he's had some crazy ra crashes here. Some crazy rashes. <laughs> some cra he's had some crazy rashes here, man. Now he's had some crazy crashes here. Um, he's never won one of these 500s. Could today finally be his day as Tabo Dine, the person who's only attempted this race once at this moment, is passing him along with Jim Sauter and Sterling Marlin. And Bob Brevik is going for it. Look at Ken Schrader going up the middle here. Jim Sauter to the point with help from Sterling Marlin. Jim Sauter is going to lead the 500 with 56 laps to go. And Ken Schrader has sliced and diced his way through the field, and he's up to, I think that is, uh, fifth? Yeah, it's fifth. There he is. Jim Sauter just led that lap. Five bonus points for Jim Sauter, the 89 team. He is, um, what is this sponsor? That's a Kraft Handy Snacks car, I think that is. And he snaps. Yeah, wow, that's a... Why haven't we used this angle? Oh, I was waiting for something to go by. Like... 
Wow, we, we need to use some. We need to use more angles in TV one. Here we go. Wow. We have not used good television angles this whole race. Yes. This is amazing. This is beautiful. Oh, man, that is awesome. Oh, my gosh. TV2 is so awesome. Why haven't we used this? Why have I been so conceited to one? Oh, oh, this is beautiful. Jim Sauter is leading the 500. And never mind, here comes Ken Schrader up the middle. And it is three. And Ken Schrader just took, split him three wide up the middle. And Ken Schrader's back to the lead. I tell you what, Ken Schrader is the favorite to win this 500 right now. With how strong that car has been, he is probably the favorite to win this 500. He's led the most laps, he's been absolutely dominant. There's no weird fuel strategy that could screw him over today at this moment. If this race goes green the rest of the way, I think Ken Schrader can win this 500. But it is pack racing. <laughs> so we don't know. We have no clue. Tabo 9. Tabo 9's just been impressive. I don't know why Tom, I think Talbot Iron's fast because so many cars are damaged. So he's, that's the reason why he's um having such a good day. Part of the reason why. He has no damage on that car. That's why I think Jimmy Spencer's having such a good day too. We're coming to the final 50 laps of this race soon. And they are almost three wide behind. Mr. Spencer. Interesting race so far. Very, very interesting race. Um, Schrader has been the absolute favorite. And it's going to be hard to beat him. Um, some spoilers, like we said, the, the boiler ma spoiler maker. Um, Todd Bedine, Jay so Jim Sauter. I keep saying Jay, it's Jim. His son's Jay. Um, Jimmy Spencer. Sterling Marlin trying to get his second career victory. Um, and um, lap traffic. La lap traffic. That, that, you never know. That could play a huge factor in who could win this race. Who could win, who could lose. Who could be victorious. Just going to have to find out. As we're under caution, I believe. Nope, that was Kyle Petty. I was mistaken for a second. Ken Schrader is still. I don't know why I keep saying Ken Schrader. Let's go look. The, look, there, there's some more people here. Um, Jeremy Mayfield, first race for him, in the 500. He's doing good. I'm running out of stuff to talk about. Mark Martin. Let's talk about Mark Martin. Um, started racing in 19, he's been racing for Jack Rouse pretty much his whole career. Um, I was going to guess what year he was racing, but then I realized I didn't know what exact year he started racing. I was going to say 89, I think that's right. I think he started racing in 89, didn't he? Let's check. Do, 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 do. Yep. I said, I just typed in Mark Marn. Mark. Martin. There's two Mark Martins. From Batesville, Arkansas is where Mark Martin's from. Let's take a look here. 
Um, yeah, he started, no, he started racing in 82. He did a full season in 82. Then, 88 was when he started racing, I think, for Jack Roush full time. He did 29. Mark Martin, 35, from Batesville, Arkansas. Trying to get his first 500. He has never won one. Could today be his day. If he gets up there in front, he's going to be hard to beat. Like I said, Ken Schrader. But if massive amounts of lap traffic backs up the field, he probably could have a chance. As long as well, Ken Schrader just pulled around it. We're in the final 50 laps of the 500. Final 50. 48 laps are left in the 500. And Ken Schrader has a stronghold right now at this moment. Absolute just stranglehold over the field right now. And Tabo 9 been trailing behind along with Sterling Marlin. Sterling Marlin. Let's do some stuff on Sterling Marlin. Sterling. And I open up Sterling. We're almost there. And there's more lap traffic, of course. Steve Grissom. Yeah, after this, we're going to do something on Steve. We're going to do something on Steve freaking Grissom. Oh, God dang it. I want Marlin. Marlin. Sterling Marlin. Uh uh, Stedman Marlin. So, Sterling. Been racing since he was 19 years old. Not full time, I'm just saying since he's been racing since he's been 19. He got his first win in 93. So, that, that is the first time he won a race in his career. And let's. Count up how many starts he's had. All right, we'll do this. He got his first career victory in his 277th start. Wow. Hmm. Good job, Sterling. Good job, Sterling. Sterling Marlin, 37 years old this year. Actually, is he going to be 37? No, he's 36 right now. 36 years old from Columbia, Tennessee. He's trying to get his first 500 in the second one of his career. Oh, yeah, I was going to do a thing on Steve freaking Grissom. Mr. Slow. Oh, Mr. Oh, the freaking rolling chicane. Okay. I didn't get anything. Oh, wait. If I just look up rolling chicane for in the 1994-500, I'll get Steve Grissom. No, nothing against Steve Grissom in real life, but in this race, in this 500, he's been a rolling chicane, a rolling roll block. Like half these lap cars. Steve Grissom. This is going to be his first full-time year. It's his rookie year this year. Forgot to mention that. Um, he made one start in 1990. He's going to be 30. He's going to be He's 30 years old. Steve Grissom is this year. So good for him. Um, in the Xfinity Series, he's got some success, having won eight times, and he won the championship last year in the Xfinity Series. I mean, oops, I meant to say the Bush Series. That's the Bush Series. What's Xfinity? What is Xfinity? I don't know what Xfinity is. Infinity? The Infinity Series? What the text Infinity Series? Never heard of that series before in my life. Um. Hmm. When was the last time Steve Grissom raced? All right. Last time he raced was um. Never. <laughs> um. It was like 2009. We're coming into the four, final 40 laps of this race. The final. 
a hundred miles from the 500. Wow. I never thought I would say we'd be in the final 100 miles of this damn race. And Kyle Petty, the rolling chicane, is here as well. And that just lost Ken Schrader the lead. Oh my gosh, that lost him the lead. Oh, wait, hold on. He might get it back. No, Jimmy Spencer's going to get it. Man, imagine if that happens on the white flag lap. <laughs> just Kyle Petty just lapages. Just destroys Ken Schrader. <laughs> who are that? Destroys the pack. All of a sudden, just... Freaking Bob Brevik wins the 500. That could happen. That could happen. If that happened, I I don't know what I would say. I mean, I'm trying to imagine the name Bob Brevik, 1994 Daytona 500 winner. Just gotta love NR. Just gotta love it sometimes. Come the 41 to go. Hundred and two point five miles left. In this field. Rodney Orr is in tenth. Rodney Orr get a top ten, that'd be pretty cool. Here comes Davy Allison under under top of nine for second here. Um where the heck does the next lap car that runs into the field here? I will do a little piece on as this moment. We're just gonna watch some nice little racing here. Man. Ken Schrader. Oh, there's Morgan Shepard. We'll do a piece on Morgan Shepard. <laughs> oh my god, Morgan, you just screwed. <laughs> Morgan's got his hand out the window waving at Davey. This is for screwing me out of the 92 500. <laughs> Joke's on you. You just took the whole field away from Ken Schrader. The final final hundred miles here. We've entered it. We have one pit stop left. One left in this race. When will they do it? The win the window is opening now. This is right around where they could probably make it on gas. They can probably go about almost forty laps on gas here. So the window is just about ready to open here. So we're gonna have to find out when they do pit. Thirty-nine laps left in this five hundred. Holy smokes! Um, Morgan Shepard. Let's talk about Morgan Shepard. Um, some statistics about Morgan Shepard's career. So, I think in our universe he's got five wins. Hmm. Shares the same birthday as my grandmother. Interesting. That's just something I found out. Um. Yeah, Morgan Shepard has, he won, last time he won last year was at, not there, not there, not there. Right. I know he's won in our universe. Has he? Yeah, he won at the, yeah, he won a fifth career victory at, um. How was this? Oh, that's right, he won his fifth career victory at Dover last year. I forgot about that. Yeah, so he won at Dover last. That was where he got his fifth career victory. At the age of 51. At the age of... No, wait. My mistake. Yeah, at the age of 51. So, hey. I actually he was 52 almost when that happened. I think he was almost 52. He's, co he's approaching Harry Gant's age if he wins another race. And Harry Gant holds. Speaking of Harry Gant. Yeah, we're getting close to the time where people could pit here with 37 laps left. And Tom Wadine's going to the point here. Davey Ellison and, and Ken Schrader just got left out to dry there. That strong that car Ken Schrader has is extremely strong. He he obviously has a little bit more than the rest of these guys, but then after that, um, I think everyone else is pretty much equal. 
I think if Ken Schrader wasn't in this pack, I think it would be any one of these guys' races. All these guys are pretty equal cards at this moment. Ken Schrader, you just look at that. By himself, he's just slicing and dicing through these guys. I mean, he went from, he fell on that lap from first to like eighth, and he's already back to the lead in the lap. That's how strong that car is. Less than 30, less than 40 laps left here. Come the 35 to go next time by. Morgan Shepard is, he has four victories. He's five actually now in his career so far. Um, yeah, pretty interesting for Morgan Shepard. So the more you know, the more you know. Back down in the three here. Ken Schrader leading pretty handily over the rest of the field at this moment. Look at that. I mean, Spencer just dove that thing in there. Thirty-five laps left. Jimmy Spencer still runs second. There, yeah, Jimmy Spencer won this race for that Bobby Allison more sports team. That'd be huge. Had a little bit of sponsorship possibility not having that. The Nike mufflers come back. They came back and they came back and they are showing that it is good that it is good that they that they did come back. Blech, I cannot speak. Maybe doing a 500 mile race will do that to you. Um. Anyway. Uh, um. 34 to go this time by. Like I said, any time these guys can pit, they probably can make it on gas. If I was them, I'd split it. We we, you know, especially if I was. Ken Schrader, um, strong car I had, I would, you know, well actually, Kyle Petty once again, the rolling chicane here, oh no, he reached him in the corner here, oh that's going to screw some people over with, um, well actually we don't know, I don't know, I, I would wait it out, um, we saw that in about pit, about 35, 37 laps into a run, um, so we're probably going to see them pit in about 10, probably around lap 170, 165, wait, no one like 75, 180 almost, maybe somewhere around there. About with 25, 20 laps up. Five of them. I would pit now, get it out of the way. So we can just go to the finish. You know, let the, my driver take care of it and win the five. Get a chance to race and win the 500. You know. Oh, that's one thing. Well, I. We got to look out for strategy. You know, two, four tires. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, what was I doing here? I was doing this. I forgot to update my all-time wins list I have in the back of my notebook here. Let me do that here. There we go. Update it with what's going on and nowadays. Yes. I'm not even looking what's going on. Ken Schrader leading with 32 laps left. Anyone pit that time by? Nope, nobody pitted. We're good. We're good. Everything's good. Everything's good. Ken Schrader still leading. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Man, he's getting a huge suck up on these guys. Oh, what's he going to do here? Oh, man. And we're coming up on pit stops, too. And the end of this race. Uh-oh. This is looking interesting. Um... Let's just see what happens. Oh, one second, I'm writing down something. Alright. what I miss? Oh my god, I missed this. <laughs> oh no. Oh, they're four white. <laughs> oh man. Oh no! 
30 laps left. They're going for it. Oh, Davy Allison to the point here with 30 laps left. He's trying to get out of the situation. Uh-oh. Oh, Ken Schrader, big run on the inside. Get Davy Allison block it. Oh. Man. To trying to get around Rodney Orr. Who is the 10th place car they're going to lap. Oh, oh my gosh. Ken Schrader's going to split it up the middle between the lap traffic and Davy Allison. Todd, Todd Bodine's going to go with him. Where is Todd Bodine going to go with him? Todd Bodine is not going to go with him. He's going with Davey. They're going to try and file back that good car. Or no, maybe he's going to go under. Davey three wide, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Sterling goes up high. We are in the final 30 laps of the 1994-500. And the excitement level is getting higher and higher. Ken Schrader still leads. Side by side for the lead. Oh my gosh, three wide for the lead in the one. Ken Schrader just pulls away. <laughs> That's how strong that car is, man. That car is fast. Here comes Sterling Mullen for second here. Sir Lamont, if he wins his 500, that's going to be the biggest piece of junk ever took the victory lane since 1976. That car has been wrecked all day. It's impressive what he's been able to do with it. And once again, the rolling road course in front of us here. Let's find out what happens. Oh, my God. Oh. This is intense here. We're coming into the final 25 laps of this race soon. This race is getting all but more and more intense. And look at that. You see Rusty Walsh is pitted. So we're probably going to see these guys pitting a couple laps here. Just a couple laps probably. You have to find out here. They just blow by Rusty. But watch out here. Watch out for pit stops. When will they pit? Not this time. By I don't see any of the leaders pitting this time. Probably around this time or next time by they'll be pitting. And this is going to gather the field back up, possibly. It's going to spread it out. We don't know what that's going to happen here. There's only three cars battling for the lead here, and I think Ken Schrader's got this. If, don't, if, no, if no cars if no cars are near Ken Schrader, if there's only one car behind him, I don't think one car can pass Ken Schrader because how strong that car is. He, he needs a group of cars to pass, to get him passed. Oh, my God! And Ken's not pitting, but everyone else is. Okay. Oh! Oh! <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. What? Okay. <laughs> Oh, let's see where everyone comes out here. Davy Allison. Let's watch around. Where, where is... I saw those guys pitted. Back to Ken Schrader. Back to Ken Schrader. Where's Ken Schrader? That's part of the reason why maybe they, maybe Ken Schrader was waiting. Seeing the cars wreck. Or have an absolute freak out trying to pit. Ken staying out again? Ooh, man. This isn't going to be good. 25 to go. Maybe his strategy is to go around on gas so he can take less. I don't know. We're in the final 25 laps of 500. He's got six seconds at this moment, at least. Yeah, I think he's the only car left who hasn't pitted. And this field's catching him, by the way, the people behind him are. Because he's, he's by himself. Yeah, these guys are all catching him. So he's losing time. He is losing time. He's going to have to pit probably this time by. Is he going to pit this time? Yes, he is. Here he comes. Here comes. Here he comes. Here comes Ken Schrader, along with a lot of people behind him.
Pit Road speed 70 miles an hour. Here comes Ken. Where will he file out compared to the rest of the field? He comes down, he pulls into a stall. This is it. Where will we file out compared to the rest of the field on the track right at this moment? He's pitting. What, what's he doing? He's taking two tires, I believe. Two tires and some gas. They're waiting on the gas. He should just took four. Jeez. Wouldn't have mattered. I would take four just so he had more, more grip, probably. And here comes Ken Schrader off the pit lane. Here they come in the background. How will they file out? Ken Schrader trying to get up to speed fast. As fast as he can, he'll merge off of two. Down the back stretch here. Here he comes. He's getting up the speed on the apron. 167, 168, 69, 70. There they are. He's going to merge right out just in front of them. Maybe. He's going to have to try and slot up here. Can he slot up? Can he? Can he? Can he? He's, can, can get it. He got up in front of them. No, they're going to blow by him on the outside. But he merges back in just like they're continuing racing. This is the four cars that will debate who will win the 1994 500. Davey Allison, Ken Schrader, Todd Bodine, and Jimmy Spencer. 23 laps are left to decide this race. Four cars. Davey Allison leads. Ken Schrader, strongest car all day. What will he do? They're gonna have to, we've seen a lot of lap traffic today. That's going to have to debate. And here comes Ken Schrader to the point here. Coming around the 22 to go, and Ken Schrader's going to power by with help from Jimmy Spencer and Todd Bodine that's going to motor by too. And, Ken, and Davey Allison goes from first to fourth in the corner. And Ken Schrader back to the point. 22 laps left. An incredible race driven so far by Ken Schrader. Led the most laps by a country mile. Been obviously a dominant car. Avoided the wrecks. Now he has to just pace this field. These four to three cars behind him. 21 more laps. Drive a smart 21 more laps. That's all he has to do to win the Daytona 500. 21 to go this time by. We're coming into the final 50 laps of this, or the final 50 miles of this race. 50 miles is all that's left in this 500. Here next time by. Fifty miles left to the side, 50 miles left to determine who will win. The Great American Race. The 36th running, I believe it is. Let's see. Is it the 36th running? Yeah, the 36th running of the Daytona 500. Can we see names like Ken Schrader, Jimmy Spencer, or Tal Bodine? Put their names in a club of elites, elite drivers. Or can we see Kyle Petty ruin the finish? Can we see people like Ken Schrader, Jimmy Spencer, Todd Bodine put themselves and put their names in the elite class of people who have won a Daytona 500? Like Richard Petty, David Pearson, Bobby Allison, Lee Petty. Pete Hamilton? Or can we see someone like Davy Allison elevate his name to a two time winner of this race? He's the only one in this four in these with this four car race that can do it. We got nineteen laps off the sea. And Terry Labonte watch he just blocks everybody for him for um for Ken the win. He slams on the brakes and wrecks everybody. 
He's going to kill off one outside. He's going to kill off the outside line here. He just killed off Davey Allison's run here. These lap cars, they're going to they're gonna influence a heavy part of this finish. <laughs> it looks like if we keep running into them. 18 laps left. We're 18 laps left in this 500. crunch time now the question is little these middle there's this these little amount of cars left what do you do do you go back do you drop back and get someone to help you get a huge run and pass Ken do you wait and see if you can get him by yourself on the last lap or is there nothing you can do if you're Ken Schrader what do you do you've had the best car all day You've got cars that you know you're faster than behind you. Do I have to navigate through this lap traffic every four freaking minutes? What is, what can Ken Schrader do? Or Jim Sauter, he's not in the top ten anymore. I blew up! Oh my god. What a bummer. Anyway. Seven cars are on the lead lap. Coming up on Dave Marcus to lap. 16 to go when we go back this time. And oh man. Now this could be really good or really bad for Ken. Because those two could tandem and dr get a huge run on Ken. And Talbotine's dropped off now. I think Talbotine's going to follow the picture now. I think there's only going to be three cars left that can determine the 500. Mark Martin. Has completely lost the draft. He's by himself. And they're going to blow by him. Jeez, this is like a 19... This is like pre-plate racing 500s. And oh my gosh. Jimmy Spencer going on the outside of Ken Schrader. Can he get him? I don't think he can. The inside line's pretty good in these corners. 15 laps and come back to the line. 15 laps off. Look at Davey Allison's run. Holy smokes! Davey from a mile back to side by side for the lead. I think he's going to lead this lap. Yeah, he is. 15 to go, and that's what I'm talking about. You you can get that big of a run if, with, with beginning side by side to lap traffic, and when Kyle Petty is a rolling roll block, you can do anything. Because here comes, here's Top O'Dine. Remember, I was talking about how it could be a three car race? Top O'Dine's back in the picture now. And Davey Allison now pulling away. But is that what he wants? Is that what Davey Allison needs? Come to 14 to go this time by. 14 laps around this racetrack. Thirty-four miles. That's all that's left in this five hundred. Oh man. Steve Grissom. Side by side back to the line this time by. This time it is Ken Schrader. 14 laps left. Jimmy Spencer kind of trapped back there in pat traffic. Now Tom Bodine, can he do anything with Ken Schrader? He's kind of has one of the worst cars in this pack, but he still has had a great run today. If he wins this 500, he would win the 500 in his first attempt. The last person to win the 500 in their first attempt? Lee Petty. Lee Petty. So, obviously, a, um, you know, no one's done it besides the person who raced in their first 500. Besides the person who ran the first 500. I, I can't really explain what I'm talking about. Either way. 13 laps left. What is there left to do here? Mark Martin is in the picture, by the way, now. He's racing with these guys. He, I think Mark Martin just got kind of screwed out of having a fast car here. I think he had a fast car, but just got lost the draft and really never had a chance here. Come up with more lap traffic here. Come up to lap six place. Twelve laps left. Let me come back to the line here. Twelve laps left. And Ken Schrader gets held up by lap traffic. Davey Allison, huge run. 12 laps left in this 500. 12 to go. 
It's getting down to business now. Oh, man. There is the four cars that have a chance to win the 500 right there. We're taking down the standings. We're going to get really concentrated on this. Wow. Jimmy Spencer's going for it. Off of turn two down the back stretch here. Look at these cars coming. We'll, be, we'll have 11 to go at the line this time by. 11 laps left to determine the 1994 500. Oh, man. Davey Ellison drafting Tabo 9 by on the outside. 11 to go this time by. Ken Schrader holding on. He's got only four cars left to hold off. He led this many laps. He led over 100 laps in 19... 89 and trying to get hit trying to win the 500 he lost it to his teammate Ken um Daryl Waltrip at the time that was his teammate at the time Daryl Waltrip he's led a hundred laps today could today finally be Ken Schrader's day or can someone here steal it from him coming to 10 to go at the line 10 laps to go in the 500, 25 miles is all that's left in the books here. Ken Schrader still leading. He's He's got a pretty good hold of it at the moment. There, arrogant lap traffic. Terry Labonte, I think, all the way up to these guys. I think those are all last lap traffic cars you're going to see. And then I think for a while, they're not going to probably run into that, but... That the, after that, I think after we run through Rusty Wallace, I think we're done with lap traffic. I think for the most part we are done. Nine laps to go when we come back to the line. They're getting a run back on. They're, they're charging back. This is going to get interesting. <laughs> or maybe not. I don't know. We don't know. Nine laps to go. 22.5 miles left in the 500. Nine circuits around this racetrack. They've been racing hard all day. The pace of this race, 158.417 miles an hour. Even though we've had we've been drugged down by a lot of cautions, the second half of this race has been run extremely clean. The last time we've had a race go this fast in the 500, 158.417. Um, I don't know when. But we're coming around to eight to go. Eight laps left. Here comes lap traffic. This could be where the race is won or lost. Eight laps left. Here goes. Here, here he gets blocks him high. He gets through the first rolling chicane. He goes around his teammate. The oh, here comes Jimmy Spencer. He's looking low. Can he get him? Oh, he's gonna split up three wide. They're going to rampage around the outside. Davey Allison took the low lane. Wrong choice. Raleigh Dahlbeck. Raleigh Roblox. They drop low. This has been an absolutely phenomenal race. Dale Jarrett in the way of the moment. The last time. Take a look back here. The last time we had a race run like this. Seven laps left. We are a little bit faster than last year's pace. But 1992 was we had a race run just about the same amount of pace. Extremely close to the same pace. We're coming to six to go. This time by six laps left in the Daytona 500. And we have cars trying to get to Ken Schrader, Todd Bodine, Mark Martin right there as well. Where did Davey Allison go? Davey Allison is far back. He's still trapped in lap traffic. His 500 jeans for two might come to an end. Six laps to go. Six laps left in the Daytona 500 for Ken Schrader. It's single file racing for a ways now. Oh no, the rolling roll block of Kyle Petty. 
Oh, we have a couple of them left now. There might be a few. Oh, three wide. That's not going to help too much. We're going to be coming the fuck. Well, except for Ken Schrader. Five laps to go for Schrader. Can he hold on for five more laps? Five laps are left. It's 12.5 miles away from Dreams. Dreams of becoming a Daytona 500 winner. Five laps are left. Kyle Petty rolling roll block. They meet him on the straightaway. And once again, you see Davey Allison get held up the worst out of everybody. Here comes Jimmy Spencer to the inside. Drafting help from the, who's going to go where? Side by side with five laps left in the Daytona 500 for the 500. Can Jimmy Spencer with help from Mark Martin? A lap down car. Get him his first 500. It's three forwards tag teaming, triple teaming a Chevrolet at the front. Down into the three and four. Four laps left. Jimmy Spencer is coming to lead the crowd on their feet. They're screaming. They're crying. Jimmy Spencer, your Daytona 500 leader with four laps remaining. Can he hold on for four more laps? Ten miles around this racetrack for Jimmy Spencer. Ten more miles. Oh, oh man. Jimmy Spencer holding on. He's got a lap car protecting him. We're coming to three laps left in the Daytona 500. Three laps are remaining. Ken Schrader dives in under Todd Bodine. Look at Mark Martin. Lap traffic plays a role. Here comes Davey Allison up the middle. Allison. He throws it in the middle. There's three wide for the lead. Three laps are left in the Daytona 500. It's any man's race. Oh my God. Four of these drivers competing for one. Ken Schrader. Pulling out three wide through the lap traffic. He's going to try and clear. Everyone's hung up in traffic except him. Kid Schrader to the point. His dreams getting clearer. Three laps are left as he pulls away from the field. Coming to two to go. Five miles when he reaches the line. Two laps from his Daytona 500 legacy coming true. No one is broke free out of the pack. Jimmy Spencer filing up the middle. Ken, Mark Martin trying to get clear at this moment. But it's Ken Schrader with two laps away from Legacy. Two laps. Five miles. Ten, over 10,000 feet. And over 24,000 inches separate him from 500 Legacy. He has to go around here, but here comes a huge run. An absolutely huge run now from Mark Martin. Martin coming up strong. Davey Allison behind him. Jimmy Spencer pushing Davey Allison. They're closing in fast. Can Schrader close the block? Coming to the white flag of the Daytona 500. Here comes Davey Allison. Help from Jimmy Spencer. Davey Allison to the inside of Ken Schrader lead. The white flag waving. It's the finish we've been waiting for. Davey Allison to the front of the field. White flag in the air. One time around for the leader. Davey Allison having to hold out the field. Here comes Jimmy Spencer to the inside of Davey Allison. Side by side. Mark Martin helping. Side by side down the back stretch. Okay, who will win the Daytona 500? Ken Schrader pushing Allison hard. His dreams are not over yet. Jimmy Spencer holding his nose on the inside. Which one man, which man will achieve his legacy? Which man will taste his dreams? Which man will have his name enshrined in racing history? Off of turn four, your Daytona 500 winner is going to be Davey Allison. He clears and wins his second 500. What an incredible finish. Davey Allison wins. Davey Allison.
1988, he finished second to his father in a finish that made him want to win this race again at some point as the replay freezes. He came here in 92, led most of the race and won. Today, he pulled it off in, in late race heroics and won. That is your 1994 Daytona 500 champion, Davey Allison. Two-time winner of the 500 now. And I 23rd victory of his career. I that was an incredible finish. This race was an amazing race, I just want to say. 50 lead changes in this race today. Absolutely awesome race. I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank everybody for watching. Um Davey Allison wins. He is a, he's obviously a points leader coming in uh, coming out of this race. Tied actually with Ken Schrader for the points lead, but if the you know championship were to finish today, he would win cuz he has the tiebreaker or more wins. Um Jimmy Spencer's third in points, top of the line. It's really just the, the finishing results of this race. My gosh. That was a phenomenal race. Like I said, Thank you all for watching the 1994 500. It was, this took a lot of work, a long, I, I know it's been a really long time since for, since these videos are up, but now, now that we're done with this race, we can go and start doing um, these races faster because all of them go back to regular length now, like the usual average 10% of race lengths. So I can start doing these like I was back then, uh, you know, back before the uh, speed weeks. Um, and... Yeah, just um, when I when I simulated this race, I, I I didn't watch it, and I watched some of it back, and I was like, wow, this is a really really good race. I mean, we, we had four cars competing for a finish, and that was one of the most exciting races I've ever had. Um, oh man. I I know some of the middle was a little dragged down. Um, that's because you know there wasn't very much to talk about. Because it kind of it kind of calmed down in the middle there, but uh, that's beside the point. I just want to thank everyone for watching. This has been the 1994 Daytona 500. Davy Allison wins. Next week we're going on to I believe Rockingham. Yeah, Rockingham. I think it's Rockingham. Yeah. So until next time. Goodbye.